The UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars. Hi there. This is the amazing team who made the UBC production that you're watching right now. You can support us by donating any amount using this QR code or the link in the description below. Donate $50 or more to get a personal shout out later in the video by Mark Olson. Donate $1,000 to get a shout out and your own custom avatar on Galaxy. Thank you so much for your support. Another way to support Backgammon Galaxy is to place your sports bets on BetGalaxy.net, the fastest way to build your Bitcoin bankroll while Bitcoin is skyrocketing. BetGalaxy.net is a Bitcoin only bookmaker created by the Galaxy team and accepts players worldwide. Create an account now and place your sports bets. Welcome back, everybody, to the final match, match 12 of the UBC, the finals between Mochi and Hideaki Ueda. I'm Nick Blazier here with Mark Olson. Hey, Nick. Good to be with hey. you. And I mean, we've been anticipating this match for a while. It's, it's super exciting. It's uh, 12 to 0 leading for Mochi, uh, two points remaining. So oh, 12 to uh, 10, I believe you said oh, 12, 12 to 10. 12 to 10. <laughs> <laughs> 12 to zero, yeah. Well, yeah. Two point lead for Mochi with two points remaining in this final match with Hideaki leading the overall PR, PR race, meaning that Hideaki does have a clear path to winning this and winning both points, both the match and the PR race. And if he does that, one would expect his average to remain lower than Mochi's and, and win the final. Um, but if Mochi is able to win either of those points, the PR or the match, uh, the championship will be his. So yes. uh, big favorite to the to the defending champion here. Um, and yeah, what an exciting final match. Uh, comes down to the last one, of course, right? <laughs> yes, it's so exciting. Uh, I, I was cheering for Hideaki yesterday. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to be impartial and just cheer for good place. But yesterday, I, I have to admit, I was cheering for Hideaki just so we could got, get into this match 12 which is so exciting we know that it's going to be settled today it, it mm -hmm. everything is on the line here the maximum pressure the maximum compet competition level and uh, yeah as you said nick uh, hideaki's uh, path to victory is by winning two points while mochi mm -hmm. with the lead he has uh, 12 to 10 just need a single point in order to uh, retain his uh, ubc world championship title so yeah. I'm really thrilled uh, to to watch this match. It's the highest. It's the it's the highest stake of backgammon. It's the highest status uh, title, and uh, we've been through this marathon of a series twelve days in a row. And now finally we're gonna see who's gonna be the 2020 UBC World Champion. Yeah, I'm so excited that it took all twelve matches to get here. Um, the swings along the way have just been unbelievable. Um, it's such a cool format in that way that obviously you, you can't get here without being one of the top players, right? Maybe there's a handful of people that are going to get here, um, but I'd be interested to see, you know, exactly how weak of a PR you can play to even get here, right? If, if maybe like a three isn't good enough. <laughs> it, I don't think it, you have to be extremely yeah. lucky if you play 3.0 yeah. and, and gets to go all the way to the, uh, to the final. Yeah, and but despite the, the that, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but I was going to say, despite that, we haven't lost like the feeling of backgammon, the swings and, uh, you know, the up and down Hideaki with a huge lead the first day and then Mochi climbing all the way back to a tie game and now him having a huge lead in the end. And it still just could easily go either player's way. Right. Yes. So, yeah, I think there's another storyline here as well that uh, like last year, we've seen Mochi uh, start out really slow, playing way below his normal level. And then in the second part, he just speeds up and he's literally been averaging around 1.5 in the last five matches, mm -hmm. uh, which is insane. Uh, Hideagi obviously been playing extraordinary as well. He's a phenom four years into his backgammon career. It's incredible how good he plays. Uh, yeah. And he's, he seems to be just like the steady 2.6, 2.7 player. Um, and, and he's actually ahead. He's leading over Mochi in the average PR after 11 matches. So, I mean, how crazy is yeah. that? Yeah, it's hard not to root for the guy. It's hard not to root for Mochi, too. He always kind of does it. Um, I think I, you know, talking in private around the match, too, with you, like, I don't think there's any way, really, Hideaki can lose in this either, like, in the sense that, like, even if he doesn't take the championship away this year, I think it's clear that he's one of the best players around, and everyone's going to remember his performance in this either way, you know? For sure. Um, so, yeah, it's been a, 
amazing, amazing matchup. Super yes. exciting backgammon. Yeah. And we've had some funny moments as well. We, we had the moment with the Cox die where the umpire had to come down <laughs> and we saw the Japanese stance back and forth. <laughs> you called that one. Uh, we've had uh, Hideaki's uh, legendary fan with his uh, motivational symbols on it. Um, yeah, we've, we've seen the cool new Galaxy boards, the Neptune board and the Earth board. Uh, nice. It's so many good memories over the last 11 <laughs> days that it's almost a shame that it's coming to an end. But of course, we need to crown the 2020 champion. So that's the way it's got to be. Yeah. Are we ready to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Okay. All right. Looks like we have both players in the room getting ready for the match again. Let's see if they have more mental game rituals to get ready for this one. Yeah, look at Hideaki. He's walking back and forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is high stakes. Yeah. We do have to remember that this is match four of of, a, of day three, right? So yeah. they've been playing a few hours of backgammon already. It gets a little bit tiring at that point. Yeah. So I guess Hideaki is trying to get some blood circulation in his body. Mm -hmm. And Mochi is mm -hmm. surprisingly enough with his phone. Maybe he's checking positions or maybe he's just letting his family know but you know what i think it's mochi's family in the corner i think maybe hmm. it's mochi's oldest son and his his mom i think so oh wow they look focused huh yeah i'll be interested to know what what mochi's going through here before because i i don't feel like i've seen him do that at tournaments in the past or anything you know i guess we don't always get to see what he's doing leading up to a match but uh yeah it seems like a new thing for him you know we saw it in match 11 uh, yesterday now he's doing kind of this tai chi meditation just, thing it feels like a smart thing to do in conjunction with having game one syndrome like you've talked about with him before yeah you know could be a good way to get himself in the right headspace to perform his best right off the bat but Mochi doesn't really seem to be the player who's suffering from Game 1 Syndrome anymore. <laughs> He's mm -hmm. been 1.5-ing it in the last five matches, PR-wise. Oh, mm -hmm. this. Yeah, he, there he is. Centering his Chi. Okay, and then he's ready. Wow, this is intense. This is really, <laughs> really cool footage. You get to see how intense this atmosphere is. It all comes down to this match 12 of the UBC World Championship 2020. There's the bow in. Double bow in. <laughs> and we're off, Nick. So let's see. The level of play we saw yesterday was incredible. Um, both players playing around uh, 1.1, and uh, I think Mochi was a 1.1, and, and Hideaki a 1.3 or something like this. So already in a double sixes opening, and the kind of rules of thumb here is if Hideaki can get a inner board point lead, he tends to have a cube, and until then he does not. Um, so with Mochi making an inner board point, that's going to help him out a lot. He's split as well, so he has. Yeah a chance to make an anchor. But again, here, if Mochi does almost nothing, this could likely this, be a cube. And like this is here. nothing. Yeah. That's one of his worst roles. And having an inner board point, it's likely a take for uh, uh, Mochi as well. But I would think to just slot, but I guess stepping up makes a lot of sense since you're more primed than attacked here. Yeah, it's got to be and, close. Yeah, we see from the MC yeah. analysis, it is very close. There's definitely a merit to each of the plays. Yeah. Um, I would probably tend more towards slotting just because uh, sliding up to the 21 point is a, an improvement, but it's not that much of an improvement. While slotting, it is definitely an improvement. But, you know, it's close. Um, this must be a cube. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks like a very easy cube. And he gives... Look at all the, like, intense breathing going on here. Yeah. <laughs> They're feeling the pressure, I think. But, um... Yes. Yeah, the other interesting thing about it, too, is um, I guess you do kind of invite being attacked a little more. You open up another game plan. Um, yeah, just an interesting decision, though. Oh, yeah, with the slot? Yeah. It's... Yeah. 6-5. Uh, okay, uh, we can uh, switch to attack. It's not that he loves to do that now that he has this beautiful structure. 
Um, yeah, not a lot of other options, but this is part of the value of the cube yeah, is that you have. At, yeah, look at this play. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is the right play. As we see, the XG engine confirms. Uh, the mm -hmm. duplication of aces are really, really heavy here. Um, this is the wrong idea, Hideaki. No, no. Small. Uh, it's actually <laughs> not a small mistake. It's a pretty big mistake. It's the wrong yeah. game plan. He's ahead in the race, and this four prime is such a nice little landing zone for all of the remaining checkers in the outfield, the five checkers in the outfield. So For these two, it's not small. I'm, I'm surprised he doesn't want to play a little more pure and play down to the 10. Um, oh, it's not clear, though. One. Boards are similar, yeah. There is um, this one, but why would you give up the midpoint, Mochi? That seems like such an important point of contact. Yeah. yeah. He must feel like he's going to have trouble holding it. Yeah, so these first three, I think, are clear. And then I guess the slot, the two, doesn't look that bad, but I just feel like he can play a little more pure. Yeah, um, I think I would agree with you, Nick. I would probably make the pure play as well. But obviously, as we can see, it's very close between the two yeah. plays. Comes with drawbacks. I guess he likely would have lifted that blot on the bar, but, you know, Hideaki would have had, or sorry, uh, Mochi would have had return shots. But either way. Um, so, yeah, that's a tricky play to see, but that, that kind of makes sense once you find it. Mm -hmm. uh, just the pure lift and down, I'm not sure what, I guess fly shots don't really punish, so maybe that does build a little better. It makes some sense. Kind All of right. running out of space here, too. Yeah, Mochi gets to fill up his four-point board here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this seems natural, just playing safe and trying to bring the race home. But he doesn't have a ton of race lead, and it's not really going any of the threatening ways that he was hoping. So kind of sad to have sent the cube here. Yes. A lot of life for Mochi. Yeah, the, the game evolved in, in uh, Mochi's favor after the 6-5 deep hit mm -hmm. on the ace point, followed by Mochi anchoring up with a double three. All wow, what is that top it. play? 13 to 8 looks obvious, but then we've got this 8 to 4, 5 to 4 option from the bot. Okay. Oh, yeah, I actually saw it just because it makes it so much easier to play your numbers next roll, but it just seemed mm. weird, you know, when you had 13 to 8. But it is a bit stiff. Like, look at this number. Yeah, you just play to the ace. It seems okay. But, um, uh, yeah, again, do, it's not perfect. How do you but... play to the ace at 6 2? Oh, 6 2. I thought it was 6 1. Oh, you're right. <laughs> this um, is awkward. Well, in that case, I feel like the 6 must have to come off. Yeah, really? No, not the anchor. I was going to say off the eight, but then yeah. I actually, then I still don't see a two. So maybe you're just breaking the eight on this roll anyway. What's the um, race? Usually you want to break an anchor when you're ahead in the race, but that's not the yeah. case here. So I think he needs to play. Yeah, and engine confirms he needs to play from the eight point here. Yeah. You rarely run from your anchor when you're down in the race. And this is no the, exception. The 22 can be an exception to that roll because you don't have the timing to hold it as well. Um, but here with those two points made behind, there's a, I can see a lot of different, like the blitzing option is just too open or yes. the attacking option. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I don't think Hideaki needs to do this pure thing, but I guess it's probably not that many more shots than the fly shots he leaves anyway. So yeah, yeah good find. It's good a, find. Yeah, it is. It's definitely a good find. And that's a good roll. Yeah. Um, by the way, props for Mochi for finding the best play with 6-2 as well. He wasn't, he yeah. wasn't letting himself get tempted into making mm -hmm. the wrong play. Um, and that was a big swing. Wow, well, look at this. Are we I there still yet? think there's a, a lot of life in this for Hideaki. I mean, two blots to bring around plus the midpoint to clear after that. Like, I, I don't see a cube. No. But yeah. Good play from Mochi. It was too early. Uh, and he's... so, what are we doing here? We have to leave a blot out anyway. This is closer to safety. The other option would just be out from the back, I guess. Yes. Uh, what's. I would think Let's... that the other one is probably a little bit better for purely winning the game, while this one is a little bit more aggressive because you get that builder slash attacker on the 10 point to work on the 4 point. I guess this keeps a foot down I like about it too. You're closer to home with the other place, so there's something natural looking about that, but I'm confused. It's hard to tell which point you want to want them to break to attack you. Yeah, and there's too many shots. I, and I like your yeah. argument with one foot down, Nick, but it's just too yeah. many shots, that's the problem. This is actually a much better play than running from the, from the be, uh, from behind. I do actually, I mean, the 10 point, I like your original argument too, that it's building on the four, right? You're like, yes. so it's, it's the only play that's actually doing something productive offensively as well. So yes, I think that's correct. I would just settle on it for that reason. And how many numbers is it? It's six shot, six shots. It's seven if you include double Ooh. aces. Okay, so an inaccuracy this. here. Yeah. Mistake by Mochi. Uh, but I mean, I understand his mistakes. He doesn't want to leave those six shots when your opponent has a five-point board and you're up in the race. 
And yeah, it's almost zero shots from here. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, this, this play is pretty nice. But I think if he had played the best play, he would have probably had a cube there. Yeah. Okay, now he has it's, a cube. I believe it's going to be tough to get a cube. And it could be, but this is kind of like a earlier game where we had the four points open, and it feels like it's probably going to be a take, I guess. Like, there's yeah. no threat to close <laughs> that. I, but I mean, if you just enter on the four, it's it's a scary position for oh, Mochi, yes. right? Oh, so, yes. But he needs to enter on the four. Oh. I guess maybe once he has a checker aimed at it, is that like a clear pass? I'm not, I'm not sure. These are so confusing to me. I think something happened to a microphone, uh, Nick. You, I had like a big uh, thing. I think maybe you moved it or something. Oh, interesting. You're a little I bit, you're a little bit low now. Okay. Um, maybe I it's think it's about the same. Okay. Yeah. I see all the volume on my side, and I think it's in the same spot. So. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, um, interesting, we haven't seen the output yet, but um, I, yeah, this is just like pure feel for me. I wouldn't, I probably would be scared to send this. I don't know how to convince myself that for sure it is. Again, like <laughs> I just, what the market losers are. If you pull it off, you're sure you're going to win some gammons. Yeah, but imagine, imagine if uh, Hideaki fans t twice, you know, then you sh you, th that's uh, a really scary proposition for Hideaki's side. Um, sure. I think this is a take, um, but I feel like you could so, so easily lose your market here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess you want the upside of it going well. Wow. Yeah, like let's say Mochi rolls a, an average roll uh, like 5-4 and he's going to play 22-17 and 13-9 and now Hideaki fans, you just lost your market. I mean that's a market losing sequence. Yeah. That was the part that wasn't super clear to me, but I, I'd kind of buy it. Um, but it, it's it's hard to see for certain. <laughs> this is pretty tricky. I think there's some blunder potential on both sides here, which is an argument for Mochi to cube, because are we 100% sure that this is a, even a take? I, I would take it. I, I feel like it with an open, like a high open four the anchor and nothing directly threatening the four like you're gonna get fly shots roll after roll after roll um and what is like worst case the gammons we have outside are it's a lot of pips it's uh 38 so i mean yeah it's probably like i mean mochi also has a dead checker here but yes so if he gets closed out it is going to be like and probably what is it i don't know just throw 75 percent out there for gammons but it's going to be a high number right but Oh yeah, Gammons is going to be high, but yeah. it's going to be pretty difficult to make the closeout. I think it's just that yeah. Mochi's winning chances are quite high here. Um, I feel like, but yeah. I feel like it's a take as well. I guess the the race is more trash than I'm realizing. Look at this. You know? He yeah. finds the cube. Wow, beautiful find Mochi. And look, it's the take pass decision. It's not an easy take. It's yeah. a take according to Extreme Gammon XG++, but it's not a big take. Well, this is about what I would have guessed. Um, I might have just thrown out uh, two to one, like a you know two thirds wins kind of situation in relatively high gammons when it works. Um, and that's what it looks like. I mean, I think I feel like he's going to find a take here. I, I would say that Hideaki has been more on the pass side when it's close, um, but I don't know. It just seems like this feels like a position where he's aware that that he can take it. It's a really tricky position type, this one, mm -hmm. because it all depends on Hideaki to enter first, and then he's got the contact game. And, and usually when you're on the bar against the five-point board, it's, oh, good take. Good take from Hideaki. A Are brave we take as well. And look at this. Wow. Are we going to have a one-game final here? <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't very well be. I mean, Mochi just needs a point, so... This is a tricky decision too. I, I, I'm inclined at first glance to to bring two builders down and keep the midpoint, but I guess that doesn't get closer to just winning the game in the race. So this has a lot of merit too, of course. Yes, it, it would kind of it, it would be very annoying for Mochi if if Hideaki enters and he hasn't got that back checker moving yet. So yeah. that's a very very strong argument for coming out. And we see the XG X, XG yeah. evaluation here. It is the best play that he's looking at here. Um, yeah. You don't want to get stuck. You don't want your opponent to enter, and then you're stuck with a back checker. Mm -hmm. I do kind of the tricky thing about this too. I'd probably find the 13 to nine yeah. with all of them, and then continue to the five first. 
just because it looks like when Hideaki enters most of the time that you'll be set up with shots and not risking being hit on like at least one of them, right? Yeah. So he comes out and gives up the four six, and it's not clear why he would do that when. But you know, it's. I five... guess four six is really good the other way. Yeah, too, exactly. So, exactly. He yeah. has five good numbers here that gives him a ton of play in a contact game. Four three, mm -hmm. four six, and double fours. So. Yeah. Man, what a confusing it, tactical game that they've found themselves in yes. for this, you know, game one of the final match. This is exciting. He he shouldn't uh, maximize attackers here. He should focus on the connect connectivity play of bringing the back checker home. He's too disconnected here. It's got too far to go. Yeah, there. Oh yes, <laughs> we've seen this so many times from Mochi. He keeps looking at the second best play, and then at the end he finds it. Oh man, and, is he and just gonna? play perfect through this too now okay um wow there's uh, some very interesting duplication with 16 and 8 i don't know if that's enough to, to make it make sense in an extra blot but um yeah what else the other thing would be just playing to the six for, six for the building potential yeah oh look he is looking at it uh, nick i think it's too much to leave uh but this one is actually also three shots because this one is oh i like this three to two makes a lot of sense oh yeah so you yeah. duplicate double fours, and then this Didn't even one, look for that. This is also a good play, actually. We see that from of the ending. Yeah. It's really, really nice to get that builder slash attacker into the six point. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a, such a cool play, the best play. This play is wrong because, okay, it's, it's not wrong. It's 10 million points. But here it's three shots anyway. It's four, three, and double four that hits. So you don't mm -hmm. really gain in terms of hitting numbers. Um, so now I guess we just awkwardly stack it up if you're going to come to the the 11. Um, oh, he sees this 3 to 1 now, okay. a roll too late, but yeah. okay. He leaves one shot. Of course, shot. we understand why. Yeah. He leaves one. Okay, so Hiyag is in, so he does have some contact value here 17% yeah. winning chances. And it's good for the gammon save as well, coming in now rather than later. Oh, look at this. Ooh. And now he has no room to do anything with that checker on the three because he wasted it already. This would have been him. As usual in this match, Mochi is immediately punished for a small mistake on last roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now he's got to figure out which of these is better for breaking his inner board because he can't volunteer a shot or a double shot, much less. The thing with Mochi's last play was that he didn't really have much gain for leaving that one shot. He, he did have a little bit better flexibility, but that builder on or the, the checker on the 11 point was not a builder because the four point is out of the range and uh, therefore there's not really much gain uh, to, to giving leaving it on the 11 point. He should have just safety it and played it with a zero position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's still ahead in the PR here. 1.5 for Mochi and 2.3 for or 2.4 for Hideaki. Now what's the decision here? I'm just slotting the three and assuming I need that to win and why not? But I guess it's some gammon save pips you're missing out on. I don't. I don't know if the gammon's the worry anymore, though. Yeah, thirteen to seven. Okay, I'm not sure why that would be a stronger play here. It does lose a little bit less gammon. I think that's why. It mm. wins uh, 0.3 percent fewer oh, yeah. games and loses uh, 1.9 percent fewer gammon. So there's actually a pretty big gammon gain in not wasting those three pips that you do by going all yeah. the way to the three point. Yeah, I'm just. 14% or 12% is like almost no gammons to me. <laughs> so I'm just ignoring it and trying to play like it, the win's going to matter more. But it doesn't generate them any more wins. Interesting. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit weird to spend time bank on this. But now, of course, he is way ahead in, in the time bank. So he has the luxury of doing it. Uh, sure. But it's not really a crucial decision. Holy. He needs to win both PR points, though. Um, wow, can we afford to clear the six here? I mean, this is for the rest of the game, but you can't volunteer a double shot, I guess. So what are you going to do? Yeah, that's um early thing I learned is never give up that, that six point. But uh, but here you have to. Yeah. And now this is looking pretty strong for Hideaki. It's going to be tough for Mochi to get home here without leaving a shot. Okay, that's step one. Oh, he's looking at playing two from the... I don't think that's the right idea when you're up against the close board. Yeah, just play it safe, Mochi. Yeah. Yes, that's the right idea. So this is Hideaki. He's got the freedom to just leave off the 18 pretty much as well now and yeah. leave single checkers in, on both spots. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. Is it possible? 
I that don't he's see. this. Why hmm. would he? Why would he risk three extra points uh, by recubing here as an underdog? Okay. Yeah, he I'm comes not to sure. Uh, he could should at least have a double shot. He, Mochi can still take even though he exposes himself to a double shot. So this can yeah. never be a cube. It could be a thought if he's going to lose enough gammons when Mochi gets away with it, but True. I don't think that's the case here either. No, that's not the case. Um, okay, we're going to give up our five point now, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> it's just, it's... What a mess for Mochi. I don't think oh, he's going to find the double hit here. That would be a very aggressive. Okay, he's looking at it, but uh, it's yeah. crazy, Mochi. Just, just clear the five. Yeah, it's the right idea. Yeah, that is interesting. If he goes for it, he's the one that can lose a gammon for sure. Yeah, you know? okay, he does find the best play. When you're up against the six-point board of your opponent, yeah. short-term safety is just everything. You cannot get hit. You will lose the game instantaneously. Um, again, I mean, okay. yeah. Okay. I think he's just visualizing the role he needs. Okay. <laughs> he's focusing really hard on what's going to happen to Mochi next. I guess Imagine he just every to... anti-joker, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's more crucial what Mochi rolls. Uh, I think Hideaki just wants to roll something small so he doesn't have to crack his closed sure. board. What's Mochi's worst here? 6-4 is pretty bad. Is there worse than that? 5-4? Oh, 5-4 is worse. 5-2 <laughs> is good. That's really good. You get to pick up that yeah. checker. And if... Oh! The deep ah, one. I think this is right. Yes, yeah. it is. It is right. Yeah. Obviously, you want to get that problem out of the way. If he can either fan or enter with a six, Mochi will be happy here. He yeah. has just... Okay, he comes in with a four, of course, maximizing the contact zone. And I think, yeah, 18 to 13 here, you'd like to keep the double shot, but it's more important to keep your board and win when you do get a hit. Yeah, so. totally. That's a yeah. good lesson for all the newcomers to the game. Don't break mm -hmm. your inner board. You will not win the game even after a hit. Wow. Ooh, oh, okay. what a joke. That's okay. going to be an easy four points to start the game, but uh, very unlikely that any gammons are lost here, so we're yeah. still alive. That was a big swing from Mochi that he get to bring this position home safely. Yeah. And both playing lights out, of course, but the PR race is still open. But Mochi's yeah. got that for now, too. So so Hideaki needs something to happen there, too. Yes. So, um, you know, he started off needing a lot of luck, and he needs a little bit more now. Yeah. Hideaki essentially wants to send a tough gammonish cube, which Mochi makes a blunder and takes, and then wins a gammon for four points and gets back in the game. That's the dream, huh? <laughs> That's the dream. Okay, there's the resign. I think he should get the decision here, um, but he actually didn't move it. The new 2021 Galaxy Earthboard is a tournament luxury board optimized for travel. Pre-order now. Details in the description below. We're ready. Are you? Melbourne Backgammon International. Online from February the 1st. See you there. Hmm. So maybe the umpire, if it gets, it most likely it won't be critical but I think Hideaki just cheated himself from a decision there mm. just resigning that's an interesting intricacy of the format <laughs> yeah when I transcribe my own matches I don't worry about that at all no doesn't change your match winning chances yeah I don't learn anything from it yeah. <laughs> so, so I'll okay. move on so look at this yeah. offensive uh, opening from Hideaki he brings uh, the 10th checker down to the zone increases yeah. his prime and blitz value um, and not, not really doing anything yeah. about his defensive side of the position. It's uh, a score play, you would think, but similar to the 5-1, it's not quite worth slotting still. The 5-2, it's still a little just better to split, but uh -huh. um, much closer at the score yeah. and fine either way. Um, yeah, one would think you just make the five point here, very strong. But and I so... like Hideaki's play still because this is human versus human, not human versus computer. And uh, Hideaki is going to be able to send more aggressive cubes, more gammonish cubes after the, uh, the offensive opening. Wow, look at this. Mm. Oh, now this is pretty interesting. Now it it's uh, three back to one back. I mean, it feels like enough of an advantage at the most sensitive scores. I'm not sure seven way, three way is exactly that, but I mean, yeah. it can't be bad. I think, I think actually, uh, it, I, I think that this is a small cube. He's up 25 pips in the race, he's got 10 checkers in the zone. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I like the way you said it, Nick, that this score, you have to adjust a lot, but it's not the most critical score. It's not four away, two away. 
but mm -hmm. it is definitely a big adjustment from Hidiaki's. Yeah, and it's a good double and it's a good take. Uh, yeah. So great play for both players right in the a sweet key spot. component is the number of checkers back in this one. We might not be wow. as focused on that usually, but the three back is going to generate a lot of gamins. Yeah. And Hideaki has a slight, slightly more wins with one halfway to freedom too. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's and Mochi's... just enough pushing to that kind of gammonish winning advantage. Yeah. Yes, totally. Mochi's got 168 pips to go. He will lose some gammons. But look at this double. Is that the real? Is that the play here? Uh, it's tough. Of course, you see it hits on the 10, and then you don't know what the last one does. I think you just do that though. Just get a checker moving around, right? I think and play so a too. positional game, two back to two back. Um, why do you want to blitz with three checkers back yeah. in a score where it doesn't pay off? That's the I just, thing. Yeah. I think that's the, the key feature here. You don't have the ammunition for the blitz. This is, a, in my yeah. opinion, a better play. I mean, I might be wrong, but this is I have a yeah. clear preference for this play. It feels a little stiff, and it doesn't unstack the six. Are kind of probably why he has a problem with it, but I still, yeah, I think this must be mm -hmm. it, especially at the score. You could also play 10 to 5. Yes, this is good. Yeah, and that's even the best yeah. play. Mm -hmm. He sees it, Mochi. Let's see if he can the find six it. The 6-1 along with it is very interesting, too. I might be very tempted by that to keep my spare on the midpoint and oh, yes. put a second checker in the air. Wow, that's a move, huh? He looks at it. He sees yeah. it all. So he, now he's seen all four top contenders. And as we see from the engine, it's dead mm -hmm. even between them. And I think it kind of uh, looks like maybe for money it's a better option. But, oh, wow, they're all this close? That's the, I didn't even realize that this play was also right in the running. Um interesting i think i think i would find 10 and 1 here I, I like that a lot 10 and 1 is pretty advanced uh rarely right to hit on the ace but i i definitely see the the points here it buys you a lot of time it you gain a lot of tempo to try yeah. to free your back checkers which is your biggest liability in the position right now that you got two back checkers on the 24 point mm -hmm. um i think i would have end up playing 10 to 10 to 5 here with the last five but I can see the merits of all of the plays, even Mochi's. The thing with the dub, okay, he plays this one. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, double five does play well with six to one blitzing. It's pretty default. That this might be complicated for Hideaki here too. What do you do with nope. this? You can hit loose. I don't think that's the play Hideaki. Link blots, yeah, with the eleven. Oh yes, you got such a nice play available to just build, consolidate, and build the beautiful eleven point. Yeah. So and this instead, is too much. So you, yeah, so you have to think of this as giving away the eight point and the 11 point for a loose hit and you in exchange you get five blots yes <laughs> right That's all for a, for a checker on the bar yeah so um you got to look at it you want to make an aggressive play yeah. at this kind of score but this is just going to be too much more solid you know yeah look at this beautiful position i mean yeah it just looks perfect you mm -hmm. to completely consolidated you've got tons of efficiency uh, you've got many nice points. The 11 point is blocking the end. It's blocking. Oh, this is not good, Hideaki. This is not the right idea. Okay, he shakes his head. He realizes he comes to his senses. That's the play. Good play, Hideaki. Now four to equalize for Mochi. Oh, ooh. Uh -huh. Dance? No dance? Oh, I thought for sure we were going to have to investigate the five. <laughs> but okay, makes a point, makes a point. Okay, now it's an easy hit, of course. Oh, yeah. This That's is... like a nice shot for Hideaki. He's yes. happy with that. When it works, it works really well. And Mochi wants to enter with a five. Oh, that's huge. Ooh. And do we that do the, huge. yeah. Wow. I like this double split, double coverage when you're attacked on the five again. Super nice. Oh, and he, they produce. They just produce. The anchor is key. You would like to hit along with it, but that'll do. Mochi's got a lot of anchor making roles here, and this oh, is one of them. Is. And now it's hard to tell who's really leading this. I guess Hideaki is slightly with less checkers back, but he's got the worse anchor. Um, he's got a slightly worse anchor, but Mochi's got that uh, annoying little back checker on the oh. 23 point, which is getting primed. And okay. look at this roll too. Like oh, wow. I mean, he's got a he's got a volunteer. The question is oh, where. Oh wow! Oh yeah. yeah. I guess that's the best way to do it. I mean, what else do we have? 13 to 10. Um, Why two blots and double shot? You know. It, I don't see it. Then you got four to one with no hit, but that's not good. And then you got this one. I, I this can't be better than just playing yeah. eleven to eight. Eleven to eight dominates all of these variations. These are some of the hardest, though. It's just so frustrating when you get a roll that's just clearly awful everywhere, and nothing's yeah. really a good option. So it's you're picking your least destructive thing, and they all just look really trashy. You're used to just ruling out every one of these plays, right? 
Yes. They're all non-options. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, I think, yep. Okay, so 11 to 8 is the best of the worst. And they're the reasonably the close here, too. That's uh, interesting. It is. Uh, yeah, I would predict that it would have been a, a bigger mistake to make this play that he's looking at now. So he's recognizing some value that I don't see. Um, yeah. It's also interesting to see uh, Hideaki's uh, body language here, Nick. I think he's yeah. like, usually he's super zen, zen-like, but now he's kind of like showing a little bit of, yeah, I don't know, uh, frustration maybe. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not tiredness. used to seeing him feel like frustrated with the position. Okay, he finds yeah. it. And this, another key of this is that it forces Mochi to give up his anchor when he does hit, you know. Yeah. Um, but okay, yeah, this is interesting. It seems hard to... Just give up a point when you can make this shift, but XG yeah. likes flexibility of playing to the six a little better. That's funny. Fine, fine. Uh, yeah, probably just playing safe here. I don't see why you would come down and volunteer a double shot. I think he's looking at the hit. Yeah, that's the play he was looking at. Um, mm, this is interesting. Yeah. But I think it's probably too much because he's still got the race. But that's the other variation of the hit. Yeah. I think maybe this one is a little bit worse, actually. Uh, in he is down in the race. I think this um, is the but play. Yeah. yeah, and Mochi's usually going to liberate the back checker. Um, so maybe he's thinking about that, that like a tempo gain could be cause Mochi to break something with too many points. Um, but yeah, this just feels like the natural thing to do. Just let the mutual holding game kind of go its follow its own path. You know, you don't want to force things in mutual holding games in general, especially when the race is close. Yeah, the race is, that's the key here. Um, in mutual holding games, the race is the number one factor. Therefore, safety is really important as a concept. You can't really just yeah. play bold and flexible. Yeah, that's the play. Well played, Hideaki. We really couldn't have asked for a better final match so far, though. They're both getting hit with some really challenging plays and a lot of interesting options. Uh, it's true. This looks natural, too. But so far, they're performing incredibly, incredibly yeah. well. OK, Ace is here. There's some choices. He, there's the hit. I think if he hits, what do you, what does he do with the last ace? Go to the uh, go to the ace point, or shift to the play three to two, or do you oh, block yourself? I think this was my initial idea, just playing like this, uh, yeah. no hitting play. But it's also an option to play to the the eleven and just make that. Um, it is not as good as making the seven. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it blocks it blocks your back checker. I see this now. It it blocks the back checker and it's so yeah. nice and efficient that rather than having yeah. one point with those four checkers, you get two points, not just any two points. So good, good play find, here from the Yeah, you don't really mind forcing Mochi to have to deal with his problem with that back checker instead of putting him in the air and letting him wait. Uh, this is interestingly bad too. What a man! How are they finding these roles? <laughs> Yeah. There's no way to not leave a shot here unless you no. want to destroy the board behind. Yeah. I don't see the two to one being the play, but he's going to look oh, at it. He's going to. Oh, I can't see that. So right, I would never play. Yeah. I mean, that would be an incredible find for Mochi if he. Well, it could be right, but he f and he finds these when they're clear. But I mean, he oh. does tend towards pure. Pure, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, it, it's... So I just this doesn't feel like a position where he's going to find that play. It's just he loses too much and he's not ahead in the race enough. There's too many problems with it. Yeah, it's it's way better to just leave a shot. It's not the end of the world getting hit and it, it's a severe blow to the long-term equity to destroy your inner board. Oh, great shot, great shot. Definitely a great shot from Hideaki. Now Mochi needs to enter. Yeah, okay, yeah and doesn't. with that blot around, he can win some gammons here now for sure too. Oh, yes. The four is like well on the way. Yeah, I agree. Um, Oh, this is awkward again. What is this shot? Do we just liberate a back checker and hope for the best? I mean, we get attacked when Mochi enters, but everything else just looks I, destructive too. Yeah, that's so. the thing. I think you just do this. I don't yeah. really see too much. I mean, you would have lost well, nice. to, to roll like 6-2. Then you could come out and then play 8-6 to six and safety that blood. Um, so this this part of the 6-3 is nice when you break the 12, but I feel like you almost have to come into range if you're going to do that and play like 12-9 to nine with it. Um, so yeah, yeah. It, it just feels like too much. Yeah. Good play. Okay. Yeah, you're right, Nick. That 12 coming in with 12 to nine is better uh, than the other one uh, after playing uh, 12 to six. Oh, and he gets to clean up. This is going to save a lot of gammons. Mochi's going to be really yeah. happy with this roll. Super nice roll for Mochi. And now just hop out into the outfield and clean up the blot is great. Yes. Ooh, what are we? Yeah, yeah, of course. There we go. Yes. He sees that he can make the nine, I suppose, but this just must be. This is winning, you know. Yeah. Oh, the eight, you mean? Ah, uh, yes, yes, the eight. That's what I meant. Um, okay. So Mochi needs to run here. 
I think so, but you put Gammons back on the table, so he's probably a little nervous to do it. And if he does run, it's got to be all the way for the single shot. You just I, lose, I mean, you just I lose so much race equity by playing the, this one impure by burying yeah. checkers. Race mm -hmm. is so close that every pip matters so much. Okay, this but, is an illegal play, and oh, yeah. Idiake points it out. Good. <laughs> but look at this, Nick. The engine says it is right to play the yeah. ugly safe play. It's uh, not a pleasant running play to make. It's, no. you know, speed gammon, you just do it. He but plays yeah, well. good find, good find. Really, really well played by Mochi there. I would have probably made a mistake there. Um, of course, the safety principle in the mutual holding games they, and the race when the race is close is crucial. And I realized that. So that's probably why this is the best play. But I That just was a really good find too. Uh, Hideaki finds a way to take advantage of the blot and board and the dead checker and leaves the... Well, we'll, we'll call him the the checker back on the 17 to contain. Yeah. Um, nice I think play. that that moment is past. Yeah, and you just play to the six now. Yeah. And um, Hideagi is ahead. Ah, this is not the right idea, Hideagi. Here you yeah, could you get still into to get trouble. your checker home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your checker home, and you're way up in the race. 16 oh. pips after the move. It's a clear, clear play. Uh, six two. This is a great shot. Mochi yeah. liberates one of those checkers and keeps moving. Doesn't have to destroy his front position or worry about leaving shots. And the five three. I'm not sure if we need to volunteer yet, but you know, otherwise we're playing behind, so it's kind of tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave any shots here. There's no reason for that. You can probably leave yeah. it. No, this is the wrong idea. This is the wrong right. idea. Giving us a, a seven. That's six out of thirty-six shots. So yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the best play. And uh, Mochi is also in timing trouble. That's also why you need to play tight, because Mochi might have to crunch his position next time. You're so likely to have to leave a 7 kind of as this game progresses anyway that it's very tempting to just, you know, before you dump all the checkers and maybe have to leave something worse. But leaving but a just... 7 is a worst-case scenario. Like, if you get unlucky, you have to leave a 7. So why are you mm -hmm. volunteering it now when it's the worst-case scenario? Uh, it might not be the worst-case scenario, but it could be. <laughs> Roll a few four threes and then okay. tell me what the worst case scenario is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so. And uh, and I, I guess now you probably have to do it because now you otherwise you you're gonna find a really ugly yeah. play. This is not good. Yeah. yeah. Now is the time. When you got an alternative like this to break your board, uh, now it's better to just. Oh no 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 no! Why no? Don't leave a direct shot here, Okay okay. He's just teasing. I agree us. with them though. Everyone says like thinks these are the easiest games. This is so complicated to me. Like they're just very sensitive to all these moments. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good play by Mochi. Uh, by the way, did you notice the PRs, Nick? Yeah, just outrageously good. <laughs> um, yeah, this is nice. We've got a blot and board and don't have to worry about it as much. Seven to six, seven to four. Oh, that's interesting. That's clever. Yeah, yeah it's clever. It's, it's, it's the same amount of shots, six shots either way. Um, yeah. So just clearing now. And you might leave it with a six two later, right? So just fix that problem now. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Now you're really happy you kept it. <laughs> There'd be yes. no landing place if you hadn't. So I would have kept it as well. You had the landing place, and it's a little yeah. bit more attackers from a one six and one uh, two six from Mochi. There, there we see it. Now he, he's happy. He's happy owning the 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 seven point. And this is just simple. You're just gonna play to the ace. Yeah. yeah. No need to hit he's... when you're such a big favorite in the in the race. Yeah. I do feel like like. Hideaki is feeling the pressure of finding every decision. He knows these matches have been super close. He just absolutely needs to win the PR race. And I think I think for the first time in this whole match, I'm seeing him stress about that a little bit and really consider every option and make make sure he feels sure about everything, you know? I agree. It's the first time we see Hideaki's demeanor change so much. Mm -hmm. He's just been Mr. Stone for the first 11 matches. And all of a sudden, yeah. he seems to be... It's not that he seems stressed or frantic or anything. You can just see that uh, it, he's just, yeah, feeling a little bit nervous or adrenaline or whatever it is. Now is now. He needs to perform. Every mm -hmm. decision matters. This is a fine play. Technically playing into the five is a little stronger, but okay. But he's well on his way to two points, and that's going to get him oh, back into the game it, by Nick. quite a bit. You're jinxing it. <laughs> is that what's happening? <laughs> no, this is locked up. What are you talking about? You don't have to worry. <laughs> I've never seen white win from here. <laughs> the good old jinx. 
<laughs> okay, it is looking good oh, for Hideaki. These... Great shots, yeah. yeah. These 10 hips that actually take the two high checkers off every time. Yes, it's a 4 to 1 favorite here, Hideaki. Yeah. Now a 5 to 1. And have you seen the summary recently? I think you. Is it still like. There okay, it is. look at this. Whoa. Point nine four it. versus point eight four. Super close. Yeah, and as we've seen though, when they're, they're that close, I, I can't remember if any of us switched, but we have seen the numbers be significantly different from the four ply to the plus plus. Yeah, we haven't so seen any it, switches yet. Uh, yeah. But we saw the one where we, we thought that Hideaki was just leading easily in the PR race, and then it actually came out very close. We had was... another one where they were both, we thought we had our sub one match and they both ended up over one, yeah. right? Yeah. That was actually match 11 yesterday. 1.06 yeah, yeah. for Mochi and 1.16 for Hideaki. So super, super close. Fours are better to, uh, yep, yep, stretch out for this roll. Make sure you shake them extra hard. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> a miss. Swing and a miss. Nice. Get a signed poster by donating $200 or more. Offer lasts until February 15th. But yeah, without it being like any significant, you know, not even blunders, but even an error, um, you just don't really know what's going on with the PR here. So yeah. this is going to be, it's quite the sweat. I'm glad we've got it. Yes. <laughs> uh... Mochi's just hydrating a bit, so is Hideaki. I wonder what kind of drinks these are. It's like uh, iced tea or some sort of Japanese soft drink. <laughs> or energy drink, maybe. Um... And now 5-way, 3-way is still a very sensitive score, very similar to that 7-way, 3-way. Yeah. Um, and yeah. check out the clock, Nick. Um, Mochi is down to 2 minutes and 18 seconds. Ooh, are we going to get another speed gammon match? That would be an exciting way to finish this. Yes, that's the. In goal. leading, yeah, yeah. I I want to play down, but uh, time and time again in this matchup, I've been wrong, and you need to connect. The, I the think checkers, but, I think yeah. I'm playing down here, because okay. of the stack. Uh, you got to break the mountain, I think, and yeah. and you're down. It's one of those decisions where the match score is helping you to find the best play. Yes, we look at the engine. It is yeah. better to play down. Like I discussed it with Michi last night. Uh, he believed that the match play was more complicated than money game and yeah. I tend to agree of course but sometimes it's easier because the scores is kind of guiding you uh, mm -hmm. to make the, the easy plays here and this is the case the score is guiding Hideaki and he does find a beautiful play from Hideaki okay that's gonna hit yeah <laughs> it took a second for him to realize he just yeah. zoned out a bit I think this is still Hideaki is like oh. one roll away from a cube here um, I think you hit? go for it yeah Okay. I mean, I can see probably at other scores, maybe not, but I mean, you're always tempted in, I, mean, I don't know. Look if at he the third play, Nick. 24 yeah. and then hit with 4 to 1. <laughs> That's, I like that. That's clever, actually. Yeah, but this is the point. kind of game that you like to play at this score, too, right? Like, why not complicated? Why not a lot of checkers back? You know, not as sad if you get gammoned and your opponent really is. So, so you kind of just mix it up with a lot of blocks where you can't afford to as much, maybe in a more even score. Yeah. Six, it should always be a candidate that you see, of course. But a lot of times you find just a more robust play or something. Yeah. And yeah, Hideaki is going to get his wish of a complicated game here. He's got two anchors, so now we're for sure hitting on the five. We're just... Uh-huh. Um... <laughs> yeah, all else being equal, you prefer to hit on the 20 point. Uh, th 18 to 13, this is a beautiful play. Beautiful play by mm -hmm. Mochi. Because you don't want to play 18 to 13 because that's too inflexible and too staggy. And this is already an early back game position. So you can't mm -hmm. afford to play inflexible. Beautiful play by Mochi. And what about now, this one? Oh, this I think you make, you at least 6 to 4 is probably more automatic. I think you just want to make the point. But it's reasonable to just put a blot there, and oh, yeah, but you're still outboarded, though. The the, this, four, the nine point is such good, is so good for blocking here as well. I mean, like, this is tricky. Yeah. This is so tricky. Oh, look how close it is as well. Yeah, this, I this don't. Is a tough play. I think the the blocking point just looks like you're too stiff, and if if somehow Hideaki gets lucky enough to make the twenty one, you just hate having those stacks there. 
and you're stuck with that for uh -huh. the game, you know. And so he, and he's stressing a bit on the time, uh, the time pressure here, Mochi. So like right here, this is it. I think you for sure are gonna make the. I like advancing both of these. Wow. I really think you want the twenty, and his checkers are just frozen, and you're oh, oh, you're look liking. At this, Nick. Look at this. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Come on, the Harikiri plate. Look, he's smiling. You can do it, but it doesn't actually help. You don't. The oh, oh, look at this. Play. Six to five to four is the thing. Okay, because you don't want to advance an anchor again. Yeah, I, I really, I'm not sure. Oh, so the, the 22 to 21 looks like the, a big piece of this to me. And I do, I mean, 24 to 23 is great too, because having the 20 and 24 together doesn't play super great. Like, this is. Man, that looks so intuitive uh, to me. Just do both of he's those. looking at it. I mean, this could come up right and on XG++. Yeah, it's not going to be this 394 error, but I just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I like this. And yeah. that didn't come up as the best play until down in like three ply land, but I think it's not going to be an error. Yeah, it was probably the wrong idea with the Harakiri. He has great yeah. chances still, in even in a front game. Uh, yeah. He doesn't and also just commit. tactically right now, it's nice to have the better board, you know, like yeah. it's making some things kind of challenging for exactly. most. You can't play wide open. The Harakiri plays usually becomes the best place when you have no other choice than to play a back game. Mm -hmm. That's okay. not the case here. Okay, they've got some transcription going on. Okay. Oh, Part yeah, the four. double one confused the, the trend, the, yeah. the umpire. Let's clear another point. <laughs> So, like, this is a funky position, too, where with these stacks, Mochi's kind of happy to develop a 6 to the 3, but he's not really excited to take the 9 or 8 there and lose all his, you know, uh, flexibility just to make a point behind two anchors. So yeah. uh, this is a good um, find to clear the mid. Okay, this is wonderful. Is it all that oh, wonderful? I'm not oh, too maybe sure, not. Actually. Yeah. I think you still want to break contact and come down with the 14, but, uh, yeah, actually, now that I see that, it's the wrong point there. It's tough. It's uh oh look at the flexible play there. Yes, that just the second play. Through. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's very uh, neat. Okay, it's it's still a good good play from Mochi here. Uh, very small mistake. In a 50-50 game, how do you like that? Yeah, this is a very powerful triple back game from Hideaki, and he's got the sufficient timing needed as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely dead dead even 50-50. I think position. he's likely to lead off the 20 um, first, what but it's not clear. It could be the 21. And then, the yeah, so the 6 is forced, and then the 2, sure, just continue to the ace. Do we really get that much out of leaving a triple shot right now? Yeah, but the thing is, it's not really scary to leave a triple shot. Um, so he could do it just for flexibility, but it's also quite efficient to just play 3 to 1 and not leave oh. the shot. But now he's a lot of trouble. the triple shots are going to run into a three-point board there, though. So I, yeah. I think there is a little bit of fear, and it just doesn't gain much. Um, That's true. I agree. Yeah. It doesn't gain too much. Uh, okay, uh, so the four can't be play, played here. It's just the three. Um, oh, interesting. I was looking for the four first. I was thinking yes. he needs to find that, but it isn't there. So Another yeah, just super good play by Mochi. Super, super good play. Now he's ready to clear from the rear with some of the doubles. Mm -hmm. It's a big liability to have five checkers on the rearmost point. <laughs> what about now? Maybe it's not the same now. Maybe six to three is better now. I think so, actually. The seventh checker is a little worse. Yes. <laughs> and then you go back to having yeah. an odd number of checkers on the rearmost point. Good play, Mochi. Plays yeah. so accurate. It, does, it gives him a two to play too. That's something that we have to look for. Uh, this is not bad, Idiaki. You're okay. No, He's got time to. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Deep. This is probably a little better. What do you? You don't mind being pointed on? It's a little deep. I agree. Yeah, I'm glad he's looking for other options, though. Um, maybe it just gets you more timing. Yeah, you risk cracking. If you stay back there, there's going to yes. be ways to lose your board, so exactly. you just have to be a little safer. I don't Look think, how close they are, though. I don't yeah. th yes, I don't think it's uh, really an asset to keep that blood on the 20 point, uh, exactly because you introduce a little bit of, of crunchiness to your position. This is fine. Yep. He remains... Uh, Mobile. Six, what is six four, four going to do? That's the six, and do we have a? Four? Oh yeah, and that's the four. Yeah, I think this it's a is forced. Move. Yeah, it's yep. a forced move. Good find without way to sit any bank. <laughs> that's a good thing to do. Oh, <laughs> and he now he's got to oh. think about it. He's got the better board. He's got the double shot. He's likely to get more. Wow. I, I, he doesn't have the usual reverse gammon punish where he can kind of yes, cancel him. Yes, I, I love it. He's likely to lose it. Oh, okay, um, I do not love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, I love the concept of it. 
He's... You know what I like about it is okay. Easy take. Um, easy take. Yeah. Yeah, it's a snap take for Mochi. But if he thought that it could put some time pressure on him, then it's kind of more reasonable. Yeah, but, that's true. Yeah, I think you need to know that these aren't losing your market by all that much necessarily. Um, yeah. Yeah, he should probably have waited until after the hit and then doubled. That would be an efficient cube. Yeah. Um, because even after nice to this, gain that game. Yeah. Even even after this beautiful hit, Mochi still has thirty four percent winning chances. And 15% gamma wins, so... But things can get weird here, and if he, like... Like, if Mochi enters on the two, it's actually kind of awkward, right? And now we're kind of scared about, you know, shaking up another checker and losing a gammon, so... Yeah. But that blunder so far is going to be plenty to decide the PR race, I think. Oh, yes. It's the only blunder yeah. we've seen since match 10. <laughs> oh, 1-6. Oh, six, what a one. shot. What a shot, yeah. He's got some one six jokers in this uh, championship bout so far, Mochi. Mm -hmm. Great shot. Okay, do we? What does the two do? We could also split something. What about twenty eighteen? Yeah. Okay, is this the best play? He finds the best play. I... Oh, look at this, Mochi. What about the <laughs> five? I guess you just come out, right? Yeah, you come uh, out. You I come don't out. Know. Look at the engine. You don't want to get stuck behind the prime. That's the that's the yeah. idea. You don't want a second checker involved. Either, That's also true. <laughs> but he has nothing really connected to that checker. Like he has complete outfield control, and it's going to take a little while for Hideaki to get over there. Meanwhile, Mochi is the favorite every roll to uh, to come in. So yeah, yeah I can see one, it. One, two, one more. I think to get the. Th I think you need to get the direct shot, don't you? Yeah. No. But no. I like the twenty-four to twenty-one is first for sure. I would still think sure the double shot or the direct shot, but I guess you if he comes in with I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure why you wouldn't want that. That looks that looks very reasonable to me. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's something to do with the connectivity. This disconnects a little bit, so it decreases your outfield control. Uh, but of course, your gain on the direct shot. But it, look at this! Wow, it gives Mochi well, a great duplicated. decision. Yeah, and it, well, yeah, I think the anchor seems a little too strong here. Yes, good play. Mochi is playing oh. so well. Yeah. And, ooh, this is a great, wait, what? Um, what I'm seeing right away, I thought, was just 20 to 12. Make this point and keep that can, uh, contact. Uh -huh. But I guess... Um, this is even better. He wants to keep the anchors, yeah. Oh, th this, this is the this wrong... This just feels like, it makes so much sense. I, like, you want that... Oh, wow. Beautiful play from Hideaki. Really, wow. really accurate play. Yeah, so what is the merit of that? I guess you keep your anchor, of course. You maximize um, contact value. Yes, you have connectivity. It's just a matter of all of the numbers that Mochi could roll. Uh, you just ensure, ensure that you, you're going to have shots. And so it's simply just a, a con, uh, outfield control and connectivity maximizing move. Mm. But it's so tactical. That's why it's tricky. You have to look at the dice sequences. Uh, I'm inclined to just, yeah, play in with this. Yeah. I don't see a lot of survivor roll. And the actually the, the strongest anger of uh, Hideaki right now is probably going to be the twenty-three point anger because it mm -hmm. locks this big stack. And I thought okay. that was kind of wow. that's another argument to me for coming twenty to twelve is that you're yeah almost ready to leave it anyway. Okay, what uh, about now? Maybe maybe he's gonna actually. I don't think he's gonna stay on the twenty-three point. I think he's gonna jump out to the thirteen point. Yeah, I think this is the play. This, oh, is this really the best contact? That could be, but I think I, so. When he gets by, you hate it. So I kind of, I mean, I'm immediately looking for 20 to 10 with three checkers and then finding the last one. No, I, yeah, I think this is not the right idea. Yeah, look, it is a mistake. It's better to come out because here, the thing here is that um, you're getting primed a little bit with the anger on the 23 point. And mm -hmm. when you come out and make the midpoint, you already have this perfect contact zone of actually not 12 but 13 pips away between the angers it's more than enough you have mm. so much contact and you you don't get primed yourself There's i guess a... when he escapes the 18 point you still have the 20 point backup plan so yeah, yeah. you can see some merit to this this is going to make it very difficult for uh, mochi to bring his checkers home what's tricky is that he's still down 27 after the play to me yeah you know? um this is just pure destruction again for mochi another Oh, Throw yeah. some checkers down to the ace kind of roll. Yes. Just trying to survive. It was a it was a great roll from Mochi. Yeah, this 
Well, I think this um, just... Oh, here's some potential. That's an idea. Thing. That's an idea, yeah. Yeah. This is, I mean, it feels natural. Kind of how wrong can that be? Then I saw that he could make the ace if he wanted. Oh, okay. um, but he just tries to make another five-point contact point. But yes. it's... Uh, yes. And I think Mochi is going to make a two point here, right? And, yeah. and it was a small mistake here from Hideagi, but it didn't. It it turned black after X, yeah. XG uh, analyzed so it with XG plus. So yeah. probably not a mistake. Or yeah, I like making the ace here. What else is he looking for? There we go. Mochi has a crunching position here. Okay, is he gonna hit? He has to play something. The thing is, if he just plays fifteen oh. to eight. Like he doesn't lose almost blunder any... potential, blunder potential. Oh, he blunder for Mochi. There's the oh. first blunder for Mochi in, I think, in four game, four matches. Wow, he's under time pressure too, and I didn't even yeah. talk about the best play there. Yes. Um, oh, this is going to clean up nice though. If he can just win the match, he's happy enough. So, um, yeah, make the four point. There we go. It seems to be um, the only way to have Mochi commit blunders is to get him on, in time pressure. Wow, look at this. Oh, what a shot. This is a little awkward. Yeah, yeah, and then. Oh, interesting. Good find. I would have been so fast to play 20 to 15, but this is much better. Much better. Yeah. It's the dragon with the tail. Yeah. There we go. It's a good now roll. he's still got the backup plan if that white checker rolls like a 7 or 8 next roll yes. without being hit. Hideaki is um, desperate to roll a 5 here. Double 4 doesn't Forest, hit. Does that get no, that? no, it doesn't hit. Oy, this wow. is a big miss. And what an awkward what roll do? that is. And he's still out of the race, so yeah, this is it. I think you just have your last checker to play with finally. Oh, this is an interesting thought. I don't hate it. Um, mm, what's the gain here? It's double aces switch anyway, so that's still a good number for Mochi. Feels like it forces him to move on like a 2-1, 3-1 one, one kind I don't of thing. like it. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, I think that's what he's thinking. Aye, but, um, Mochi's back ahead in the PR race now. That was a blunder. Oh, close. There's no gain to it. And now Mochi has to think about whether or not he's got Hideaki down to 16%. I don't <laughs> think there's any... I mean, it's a huge race lead. Yeah, and look at look this how clock. close this is. Yeah, yeah. Forty-eight seconds. Look how close that is. Oh. This is going to be a tough one to find under this. Oh, it's like break even. The more can he, he thinks... stand to try to make the match for it? Boy, yeah. The more he thinks, the more he should just cube. Okay, he's down to thirty-six seconds. Obviously, and so now he's, he's going to have an easy decision each way. Yeah, yeah. So. I think could it be too good to double? No, there's no gammons. Uh, no, there's no, this gammons. is just a, and you can roll a six-five. Yes. So. He should just double. And he is, yeah. And of course, easy pass for Hideaki too. Um, yes, huge, huge, huge pass, obviously. I don't understand why you need to count this uh, Hideaki. Good. He's got a full 12 seconds. Make I mean, sure you're not wrong. Mochi did make the right decision, not re -cubing. <laughs> Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Hi, everyone. This is Mochi. Let's play Japan Open this May. Come get us. But he spent half his time bank. And had he recubed, um, he would have won the PR race. Uh, and he would have won the championship, essentially, regardless of him winning the position or not. Um, hmm. But oh, that's not how dice work, actually. He rolls a different roll if he cubes. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> but if you change it, it's a butterfly effect. So you can't assume that it was the 5-4. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. He would win the PR <laughs> race. Of course, the butterfly <laughs> effect is true. He, he might wins. not win the game. He might leave a shot and get hit. Yeah, but he just needs points. to win one of the. He just needs to win one point, and he was ahead in the PR race. That's why I'm <laughs> saying he would have locked down the PR win if he had recubed, and he would have been the 2020 UBC World Champion. But uh, of course, he's still a big favorite here, up six two. As long as he doesn't lose on time. <laughs> What an interesting result that would be if he had just lost the championship. On <laughs> you can tell he's thinking about that too, right? Yeah. Oh man. Oh, great shot. This is uh, okay. This is Crawford games and no cubes involved. Um, no cubes, and it's essentially a deep DMP strategy game because right. Hideaki doesn't gain anything from winning a gammon. Odd numbered score is going to leave him two games away either way after that. So right. after a win. Uh, nine to six. That's a good cleanup find. Uh, uh -huh. Fives probably makes the A's because it doesn't do much else. Yep. And a fan is going to be a huge way to Hideaki win in a game here. Uh, doesn't, but this is not his best enter. I presume he just run, but. Um. 
usually 13 to 6 is only right if you have strong duplication and I don't really think that's the case here. Okay, small error by Mochi. I don't hate it. Um, yeah, it's probably thinking DMP, but it just... Yes, uh, exactly, exactly. That's the thing. Yeah. But it was This a small is an error. interesting lift. I would just never find that. I like his 13 to 11. This seems fine. When it works, it works really well. I agree. That was um, a but, tricky play. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Strong Very natural DMP. split. Yeah, Mochi is yeah Mochi's just... always one roll away from being alive, though. The two helps a lot. If he can cover that bar point, he's got a little play. But yeah, now that he's missed it. Interesting. Is this the correct six automatically? I would. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you get hit, you just yeah. pick up the third one. There's no risk here at all. Sure. I guess the anchor is the biggest liability to possibly lose in this game. Yeah. I guess 13 to 11 does add a couple of cover numbers. Yeah, doesn't look like switching adds anything, so it's not a four to two kind of situation. Oh, that's always good to look at those plays. Mm -hmm. I like that you mentioned that, Nick. Yeah. Uh, we really want to keep him from anchoring, but we don't have a roll to do it with, so Mochi gets a shot at his yeah. two. Oh, that's a huge deuce for Mochi. And then he's back in the game. He's just one point away away from being the 2020 UBC champion. This PR race is very tight. Oh, I yes. yeah, super tight. Could even change in the XG plus plus analysis. Yeah, I think it's a long game, so maybe you still want to make that. But seven to six, just it's the intuitive play. Mochi is eating something now. <laughs> That's a pretty yeah, pretty confident thing to do with 29 seconds left on the clock? I don't know. I think you got to keep the energy flowing. Maybe he's feeling it. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, sure. it's it's hard to remember that, but this is the end of uh, many hours of backgammon day, you know, yeah. with a lot of stress on. And I mean, I'm sure everyone's heard the stories about how many calories chess players burn during uh, a, like match day or something like that now, too. They've done studies on that, but it's, uh -huh. it's way more than you think. You have to yes. eat a lot to think this hard. Yes, <laughs> totally. Um, okay, so this is good play from Hideaki. He doesn't need the points in the outfield in order to block or anything. So it doesn't really matter how, how he plays this. Yeah, small difference there. Yeah, and he creates this inner gap. We saw this in match six as well, Nick, or was it match seven or something, where Hideaki creates this inner gap and has three blocks in the outfield for perfect coverage in case the opponent rolls a 2-5 or 2-6. So uh, he's consistent with his style. Yeah. Beautiful entry from Mochi. He does have a small winning chances here, 16% from Feels the point Feels like a big swing. Anger. I think we just bring a checker in and leave the fly shot now, I presume. That would be my play as well. Playing ten, 9 to 5, I think. Uh, 10 to 6 is what oh, I was thinking, but yeah. 10 to 6 is also Get one fine. closer to coming in. Yeah, yeah, that's also fine. It's four shots either way. I was just thinking about having... Oh. Ah... You would have regretted your play. <laughs> the butterfly. Uh, why not? Yeah, why? That's that's true. Different roll. I wonder why he wouldn't just roll uh, twenty-three to whatever it is makes to to fifteen. Makes a lot of sense there to me. But he decides to be develop his board. I guess that's probably more important. Yeah, you got to slot the five point. It's really really important. Yeah. So so that he can make it now. Um, yeah, and then out with the six would be my. This would be my play. Uh, but apparently, it's not in the top six. Same as last time, it's just more important to uh, get something involved in constructing your counterplay when he yeah. actually does leave a shot. The thing is, sometimes this third checker might be a, a, a nice contact split later on in the game. If mm. uh, your opponent gets some awkward gaps, then sometimes you can yeah. use it to split. Could be. Yeah, this feels like, oh, what is this? I mm. thought just six off. It's usually not the right idea to put a checker behind the anchor. Um, when you could just take one off instead, yes. you know. Um, and, and it's close, though. He's right to think about it. Yeah. Oh, look at this. We're definitely going to have some exciting games here with, uh, <laughs> with how close this race is. Presuming that Hideaki survives this. Yeah, Mochi but... burns one second in this clock. Yeah, it's certainly not over. It, I mean, if, if Hideaki survives this, which it seems to be, the case, uh, it's still open because the PR race is close and Hideaki has, yeah. he's in four away post Crawford. I mean, he could easily win the game or win the match. And, and with the time pressure, they're both much more likely to make mistakes that they wouldn't otherwise, even though yes. we've seen them play like robots anyway in yeah. some of these time pressure games. 
But uh, already in this game, we've seen them probably making some mistakes that they might not with plenty of time. Definitely. You know? Yeah. I mean, it seems to be the only way we can get Mochi to commit blunders. That's by getting oh. him down to less than a minute yeah. on the clock. Is this right? Is oh, that you yeah. just want to let him escape? That wow. makes sense. Good you play. Can't let him Good, play. Good intuition or... from Hideaki. Yeah. Uh, aren't these just both going to the ace? What is this? Yeah. Why does he... Okay, it's close. He's not going to win off in either way. No, yeah. He's... <laughs> He's... When you're down to 0.7% from the best play, it's difficult to make a big mistake. Yeah. <laughs> it's just you can do it for one roll, so yeah. why not keep the contact is what it looked like. Yeah, that's right. And your gammon doesn't matter, all these things. I mean, I guess it does. Your it, gammon it... is worth something. Yes, so... exactly. It's probably worth yeah. probably like half a percentage or something like this. The new 2021 Galaxy Earthboard is a tournament luxury board optimized for travel. Pre-order now. Details in the description below. Get a signed poster by donating $200 or more. Offer lasts until February 15th. I think a little... I forget what the number is. It's like a few percent, maybe. No, Essentially, it's whatever, it's Yeah, Yeah, it's whatever a free job is worth, which is like, I think, less than five, but more than three or something. Is it that big? Oh, I would guess like half a percent. You could, well, you sure. Could, Whatever percentage of the time your opponent opens with a better role than you and you get to, get to just drop. drop the game, right? Like, that's worth quite a bit. You get to do that once, yeah. you know? So. Maybe you're right. I should look it up. <laughs> Maybe I can look it up here. I'm sure the chat will tell us what the number is. Someone yes, in there knows. Somebody in yeah. the chat can tell us this. Again, it's not All right. my strongest. But so what we're talking about there, this is free drop territory and even score. Uh, currently, Hideaki needs to win two undoubled games or one doubled game with a gammon to win. Um, and that's the same case if Mochi just drops this game and plays the next one. Yeah, and so, and having lost the opening roll, he has pick him with this 5-1 because he can use the uh, free drop again later in a different game. So it's a take here. So you keep it for that equity. Yeah, that's it, good explanation, yeah. Nick. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I just looked it up with XG. It's 1.26%. The hmm. free the, the the free drop, so one point two six percent is the value uh, you, of the free drop. What do you mean you looked it up with XG? How do you do that? I looked at an in, in a match equity table in the post Crawford match equity. Oh, the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a difference of so that's the value of the free drop, or to have the free drop available, one point two at this score. It's not the same value because the further out you go, the the less valuable it becomes. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so we saw a small inaccuracy from Hideaki with 3-2. I was busy and they play so fast right now. <laughs> Difficult to keep up. And like he's got the blitz going with the cube, so this is this oh. is the way you do it. You win a gammon and win the game, but the anchor is huge for oh, Mochi, yes. of course. Huge role for Mochi. Just destroying the gammon dream of Hideaki. I Having the eights really nice. I think you start with that and then probably just, yeah. Oh, wow, uh, we should slot. The five slot. <gasps> yeah, I guess he can't afford to come off the anchor. That's really neat. It's the gammon play. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it doesn't win more games. He, Hideaki played the, the double match point move, but slotting would increase the gammons. Okay. Come out. I think this is the right idea. Yes. Interesting. Blood placement theory. Put your blots in front of your opponent's stripped midpoint. Five. Okay. So what does this do? Oh, he's super happy that he ran with it now, of course. Um, and it's like an even race, so there's yeah. a lot of life in this. This cleans up, oh, and yes. now we're playing a pretty boring holding game with a lot of contact for Mochi. Definitely. He's got to be fairly happy with how this position shaked, shook out. Yeah, zero gammons, basically, or 3% gammons, and he's got 37% uh, winning chances here. So this is this a great is spot a for Mochi. Uh, this is the type of position he can... What a fast find this is. I know you can't, you don't want to leave a shot against a five-point board, but I'd still <laughs> probably take me a second to not play 11 to 10. Yeah, these players are in the zone right now, so yeah, I'm sure that I would find it as well in a heartbeat. And Mochi ignores his op like opportunity to break the midpoint there, but yeah. it's a little premature. I think we just cover the ace from the eight. Um... Oh, we can clear the okay, mid. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's close because the race is so close, so it does have some merit to keep the midpoint just for contact. Yeah. Again, I think he's just going to make the seven here. Yeah. And your opponent's board is so much better that it's it's very nice to just not have to leave a shot anywhere. Look at this. Um, Six to one is actually the best play here because Mochi's going to run. He's going to start running, and then you need your inner board. 
Mm. Now, oh, that's a great shot from Mochi. He gets to run with one checker, and he's a favorite now in the position, 51.7%. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's a good shot, yeah. He gets ready to... Uh, oh, actually, there was a poor shot because of the race. <laughs> we were both like, good shot. <laughs> yeah, he makes a point, and now he has yeah. the attacking game plan open. And now he so. needs to attack. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He yeah. blocks a bit instead. Priming's nice too. Yes, I mean you 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 do want to pacify that uh, lone checker to not let it escape with a six, but the, you can't do that against the six prime. That's a great shot, Mochi. He gets to liberate. Let's see if yeah. Hidiagi can hit. This is crucial time for Hidiagi. Oh, he misses it. Big big swing of the yeah. title of the championship bout here. Had Hidiagi rolled that Stop. deuce, and oh, wow, look at this. Was still a close race, but uh, this is gonna nearly seal it up for Mochi. Wow, 88% favorite, I think. Okay, double three, he fights back. That's some more life. Still hurting, still needs some more sets, but uh, keeps him alive. It's looking really, really good for Mochi. And look, Mochi is leading the PR race as well. Oh, wow, yeah. By a significant amount, which uh, yeah. plus plus would be unlikely to overturn. But of course, that doesn't matter as long as Mochi wins this game. If he can do that, he's good to go and he'll be our champion. Hideagi is a huge, huge underdog right now. It's a crazy mm -hmm. sequence that would need to happen for him to be the UBC champion. Essentially, yeah. he needs to win this race, which he does 16% of the time. And then he needs to somehow get Mochi to make more mistakes in the <laughs> in the post uh, next post Crawford game. Oh, wow. We've got a champion. Mm hmm I think we've I think the reigning champion has defended his title. And sure uh, looks like it. we're down to less than a percent now for Hideaki. Oh I almost feel bad or I do feel bad for Hideaki. He played such incredible backgammon. Yeah. Um, Hard not to feel bad for either player though. I mean they both deserve it. Yes. Incredible level for both players, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a nice technical find, make another set work really well. Yeah, he's got 0.2%. Oh, 2 1, that's how it starts. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, needs a big double. Yeah, no, that's it. Game over. Game over. There's nothing to think about, Hideaki. He might as well just resign. I guess maybe it is theoretically possible, actually. So we I should don't... give it a shake. Oh, now it's not. Wow. Wow. What an exciting finish. We got the clock pressure. We got complicated decisions. We had some uh, all kinds of wild plays in there. We had a close PR race through most of the match. But there you go. There's Mochi, your champion, likely by two points, huh? The 14 to 10, pretty yes. decisive win, too. Yeah. Uh, without the overall PR win, which is interesting. But, um, you know, of course, a lot of swing in decisions through the match goes into that too so it's it's fascinating it's fascinating that he's able to win more points without winning the overall pr too right i do you happen to know what the breakdown is with the pr wins um no i'm not sure actually uh but i think let's see if we can get the stats of the median pr because i have a feeling oh, yeah, that which yeah. median pr is actually lower than hideaki's which is probably more important in uh in in terms of winning the pr points um, but still, it's difficult to say that one player played better than the other in this championship oh, uh, course, series. Yeah. So I'm excited to see the final scoreboard and we can see, yes, Mochi wins 14 to 10 and look at that overall PR. Um, you know, that's what Mochi consistently does under a 2-6 for Ueda. And this is what I was curious about, who won the most PR points here? Yeah, well, I mean, do we got... So six PR points for, or sorry, five PR points for Ueda, it looks like, and seven yeah. for Mochi. Eight so for that Mochi. Is... Isn't it eight for Mochi? Uh, oh, no, sure. sorry, seven. Seven to five. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Mochi wins. Oh. Okay. Uh, it, it was really close. Nobody can expect who will, who will win at the last very last moment. Uh, but still, my um, primary goals uh, were achieved, but uh, in order to let 
audience be excited. Uh, my prim primary goals are continue to play to uh, match 12 and uh, not being beaten by Mochi uh, till day two. So I, I achieved both of them, so I'm uh, satisfied a little. Um, and uh, I'm also satisfied with my PR under 2.7, I guess. But still, there are some blunders, so there are still many, many, many things to learn from here. This year, I, I would like, if possible, I would like to achieve 2.5 and below. Uh, that is uh, the goal of this year. And uh, after I achieve that, I want to come back here again and to beat Mochi or a champion that time. And thank you for watching. Well, I'm exhausted right now. I'm very, very tired. After day one, I was down 2-6 and I was down in PR. Then I realized that I really have to work hard to get, get back. So I practiced a lot with Kazuki and other strong players in Japan. We have many. And that makes me stronger. But I never had uh, confidence in uh, until the very, very end. I don't know. I, I'm happy, but very tired. The reason why I won was, as you see, uh, the uh, difference between me and Ueda was so, 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 so close. Basically, I was lucky, of course. That's uh, the first reason. The second reason was that I lived with Kazuki Yokota, who is my sparring partner, so I could play him every day. And I practiced a lot with him last one month, two months, um, with strong feedback by him. So that, that was, I think, the uh, second reason, and probably the biggest reason. And number three, I had a home advantage. I live in Tokyo, uh, where I live in Osaka, which is like 500 kilometers away. So he has to travel every time we play. I live here, so my family is here cheering me. Um, so that was my advantage. Yeah, I was really yeah, lucky in, in this regard as well. I owe a lot to my family uh, because I have three kids. And all of them are very, very small. like nine, five, and one years old. So my wife um, has to do a lot, uh, but she tried to give me free time so that I can practice more. And she also works uh, as a doctor. So I, I don't know how she do it. I mean, she did really, really um, help me. And I was a forever uh, all that to her. Uh, thank you very much. Well, what can I say? Backgammon is a great game. Before I played day three, I didn't know who's gonna win. I mean, the difference between me and him is like nothing, as you see. But uh, I just, uh, I hope that the viewers also enjoy the match. It's just a great, great game. UBC is going to happen this year, uh, so I have to play a game, I have to work hard, um, try to defend my title. Um, I thank uh, to Mark Olsen and his team, and I also thank to filming staff in Japan, Komalab and uh, Tsushima-san. Yeah, um, it's a great game, I'm a very happy man now. <laughs> that was wow. good, huh? It was. It really, wow. you know, you get a a broad range of, uh, I guess, emotions out of backgammon players after tournaments and perspectives on their skill levels and stuff. And I'm always, uh, I don't know, really appreciative to see top top players talk with so much humility about about their performance through it. Right? Even Mochi was asked why he won the tournament, and it's all thank yous to other people. You know, Hideaki yeah. is just thinks you know. I, I like what I did, but I can do better, and I have mistakes to improve on. Right? They're just clear students of the game. Yes, and it's amazing. That's to really see. cool stuff. Really yeah. cool stuff. It's this thing. It's, it's almost like running a marathon. They've been to through twelve matches, and now you just see they're so tired. So just get the complete honest reaction from them, their true emotions, yeah. 
And mm-hmm. it was very touching to, to see Mochi thank his wife because imagine having a wife who works as a doctor full time and three kids, three small kids, and you have yeah. to practice every day to, to defend your UBC championship title. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's some heavy stuff. I'm sure it's meaningful to Hideaki, like so early in his career to hear like, you know, someone who's been the best for decades, maybe say that there's no difference between him in the, yeah. in the defending champion, right? Um, and that goal of playing underneath it under a 2.5, I don't think that's not a thing that anyone's hit in reality over a, a long sample, you no, know, I mean, Mochi. Mochi's right, right. And even then, I think he thinks that's not his average. That's something that happened eventually with another enough play, you yes. know? Yeah. Um, but Hideaki is talking about it like he intends to consistently play under that number. Um, and that would be something new, you know? Yes. So, yeah. Wow. I mean, Hideaki is the new star of backgammon. He's got so many fans. Uh, yeah. And even his fan, Scott fans. And uh, yeah, so of course we're going to see more to, to him and his career uh, in the future. Uh, what a performance. He outplayed Mochi in the average PR over 12 matches. I mean, that's crazy that's just insane um it really is yeah 2.6 average uh yeah incredible stuff and mochi also i i think he he just turned up uh the power that he has uh inside of his uh, his brain uh and just literally played i think around a 1.5 probably in the last six matches uh Mm -hmm. which is totally insane I hope to have the the median PR uh, statistic calculated for the next segment with a secret grandmaster analysis coming right up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so yeah. I, I think even even though Mochi's PR is, I wouldn't say we're disappointed because we're not. It's it's probably right around his yeah. expected average PR. Uh, Slightly, but I think the way he played the last six games were so strong. And such a high level that that that's I feel like nobody can play like this at this level that Mochi did. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what do you feel. What do you feel, Nick? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe I just uh, don't see it as granularly, but I don't feel like anyone can play like either of them, right? And I've seen a few people do it, of course. You know, we had some other people in the in the contender tournament that were pulling off things like that. Um, really amazing stuff. But what it makes me, you know. I feel like Mochi's been in this range for a few years and it started to feel like, hey, maybe this is like the human limit if someone really focuses on this game and this is about as as much as you can study away. And and now I'm wondering, like, I mean, you know, 0.1 down, a 2.5 is an unbelievable long-term average. A 2.4 is like unimaginable best that. But now I'm starting to wonder what the floor really is, right? This is really early for someone to to find and set that kind of goal for Hideaki. So it's exciting stuff. It is. Yeah, congratulations yeah. to both players. Obviously, uh, Hideaki goes, hand, goes home empty-handed economically, uh, but with a whole lot of uh, credibility and uh, status. And yeah. Uh, yeah, as the new star player of backgammon, Mochi takes down the 5,000 euro first prize and gets to keep his, yeah. his UBC title yet another year until sure, we've got a new contender. Yep, he's just he's he's like the professional in backgammon in a way, right? So and and he just keeps doing it, and he takes his title home, and it's in a way you just have to think he's going to do it again. Uh, super close and super exciting to see someone be able to achieve something like that in a game of such incredible variance and in, in swings like this too, you know? Yes. So really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. It's going to be interesting to see if uh, any contender could become the the betting favorite uh, in such a setup here against Mochi because so far mm. he was the favorite last year against Sander Lilov and he was mm. also the favorite this year against Hideaki. But we saw how close it was and uh, I think Hideaki surprised many uh, many people uh, of how, how he could actually compete with the Super Grandmaster Mochi. Yeah. People throw crazy targets like that. Like I think I can play a 2.5 and that's what I'm studying towards like all the time, but you rarely do you get to see someone play 12 matches and almost do it, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and yeah. he did it in, he did it in, uh, in the contender tournament as well, 19 matches at a 2.7 and now mm-hmm. 12 matches at a 2.6. Yeah. Um, that's some, that's some heavy stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Okay, guys, uh, Nick Blazer, it's been such a pleasure to be with you on this journey yet again. And I hope we can do it again in the future. 
And, oh, I look uh, forward to it. I can't wait to it. Do you have any any uh, sneaky details about when the next Contender Series is up, or is that still coming? Well, we, we have an agreement with uh, the La Caleta Hotel in uh, Gibraltar, but mm -hmm. uh, of course there's so much uncertainty in the world right now. Um, the, the, the plan was that the Contender Tournament was going to be in June, early June, uh, when the weather is beautiful and the beaches are great and sunny in Gibraltar. So players mm -hmm. could come and, and not only participate in the UBC, but also the Gibraltar Open Tournament, which is an mm -hmm. awesome tournament. And they could bring their families and hang out on the beach. But of course, let's see what happens if, uh, if we can get that vaccine out and, and get some herd immunity going. Uh, so oh, the live back. Fingers crossed, soon. man. Yep. So if, <laughs> if we manage to get that, uh, that tournament up and running, uh, I would, it would be my pleasure to see you again, Nick. I don't know if it's possible, but that would be amazing. I'd hope to do it. This has been a blast. I love doing these. These are, I mean, it's the most exciting event that I'm aware of in backgammon. So it's, it's really cool to be a part of. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Nick, anything you want to say to the viewers before I head on to the secret grandmaster analysis? No, nah, just thanks for watching. And I always appreciate people stopping me on Backgammon Galaxy and telling me about the videos that they watch. That's always cool stuff. So I'm glad people are getting some out of this and it's been a blast to do. I'm glad people are enjoying it. And what's your username on Galaxy? Oh, just N Blazer. Real simple. That's always my username. Yeah. Yep. And I'm just Mark. Find me. So that's yep. also easy. Yeah, <laughs> so you guys can look us up on Backgammon Galaxy. That's going to be a lot of fun. We play there regularly. Um, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm like, my adrenaline is so, was so high and now I'm like kind of shaking it off. But uh, we got a new UBC world champion, uh, or not a new, the same. He gets to and remain still. still yep. and still. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that's, that's it. And now we're going to head on after a little uh, commercial break. We're going to head on to the secret Grandmaster analysis. And obviously, since this is match 12, you guys are in for a special treat. So you should stay uh -huh. tuned and uh, and see who it is and see us break down this amazing match by the way we didn't even talk about uh, nick how amazing this match 12 actually was so many tough right. decisions but we're gonna yeah. go through that in the secret grandmaster analysis so stay tuned and uh, thank you for watching so far the ubc is produced by backgammon galaxy play among the stars hi there this is the amazing team who made the ubc production that you're watching right now you can support us by donating any amount using this QR code or the link in the description below. Donate $50 or more to get a personal shout-out later in the video by Mark Olson. Donate $1,000 to get a shout-out and your own custom avatar on Galaxy. Thank you so much for your support. Another way to support Backgammon Galaxy is to place your sports bets on BetGalaxy.net, the fastest way to build your Bitcoin bankroll while Bitcoin is skyrocketing. BetGalaxy.net is a Bitcoin-only bookmaker created by the Galaxy team and accepts players worldwide. Create an account now and place your sports bets. Yeah, that was that. Uh, Mochi gets to keep his title. Uh, incredible performance for both players. I'm here. Um, you see how long my beard has grown and the same with Nick. We didn't shave during the entire UBC uh, marathon. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a whole community around this, uh, this event now. All these guys, all, all you guys in the chat making jokes and capturing every moment of the event. Uh, a shout out to Daniel Rovira who made this beautiful blog post. Uh, we're going to post it on, uh, on the Galaxy uh, Facebook as well. Make a link to that because he, Daniel, he made a blog post explaining all these special moments we had uh, throughout these 12 matches. Uh, yeah, so, so for, for uh, an outside viewer, uh, it might seem kind of dull, two, two players sitting there playing backgammon, but for all us backgammon fans, so much happens, so many great plays, so many small moments. So yeah, incredible to be a part of, I'm very thankful. And uh, now I got a couple of shout outs because we got a lot of donations today, so we're grateful for that. The UBC team has worked so hard. Uh, we've got volunteers. We've got somebody we need to pay a little bit. So all of your donations, it really helps. So let me just uh, take out the notebook here. So we've got uh, $100 from Michael Valier, a regular player on Bagaman Galaxy. Then $100 from Grandmaster Bob Wachtel. Thank you very much, Bob. Then we've got $50 donations here. We've got one from uh, the German Bagaman Federation. Dankeschön. From Jeffrey Beatty. 
from Andrew Casey, David Clauser, a student of mine, Charles de Granville, Torsten Hoyer, or Hoyer, and $50 from Phil Simborg, friend of mine. Thank you, Phil. Um, then we got another two donations here uh, in the last uh, couple of minutes here from Reese Mack and the Dallas BG League, or Dallas Bagaman League. And we've got a $50 donation from Jeremy Schur. Then we've got two $200 donations. And uh, that uh, for that, you get a signed poster from the two players, Mochi and Ueda. So that's up, uh, a poster up for Neil Schotten. Thank you very much, Neil. By the way, I remember Neil made another donation before, so very grateful for that. And Kurt Catello. So thank you guys uh, for all these beautiful donations. And we got some smaller donations as well. And thanks to all of them. It's truly amazing. Thank you very much. Then we got a shout out for uh, Ralph Bird and the Melbourne tournament because that's an online tournament that's uh, going to be played on Backgammon Galaxy. We actually had the first paid satellites today and we can see if we go to the Galaxy lobby that the lobby is full of Melbourne events. So you need some tournament coins to go and play these satellites because the main event is a 500 euro event. So that's a, probably the biggest uh, online event of the year. And we've got some smaller side events as well. And, uh, and, a, and a little uh, shout out as well for the new Bitcoin bookmaker, Bet Galaxy from the Galaxy team. So if you're into Bitcoins and uh, you like betting on sports, uh, since it's Bitcoins, you can play from anywhere. It, your nationality doesn't matter. And there's no regulations on that. So that's a good thing if you like to bet on sports. Okay, good guys. Let's go. Let's move on. Uh, we've got a very special uh, secret grandmaster today, a very, very special player. So I'm just going to show you a little screenshot here um, from uh, the statistics of the UBC contender tournament from Gibraltar this year. And as we can see, this list is ranked by the average PR. And you can see I'm ranked as the number eight contender here, but uh, 3.12 is not quite strong enough to be in there. But all the way at the top of this list, we've got a Danish Grandmaster Thomas Christensen who played an incredible 2.34 average PR uh, and a median PR of 2.07 which means that half of his matches he played below 2.07 okay so Thomas uh, could uh, be a serious contender for the championship next year he lost in the semi-final to Michihito Kagayama uh, who, whom we also had uh, as as a, a special secret grandmaster here today. So without further ado, uh, let's break this down. Uh, this uh, very special match down with the, the Danish grandmaster Thomas. Christensen. Thomas, welcome to hey, the Mark. show. Good to have you here. Thanks a lot. So very uh, exciting uh, match. This last one. It was. So what do you think about uh, the match, and what do you think about the whole uh, the whole series, Thomas? You've been following it. I think it was uh, extremely interesting to watch. I was much more. You know, uh, my adre own adrenaline as a as a, an audience member was much higher than than normal. Uh, that when I normally watch uh, any any kind of sport, because I, I kind of imagine myself making the plays and try to think about it and and uh, imagine what they are going through and the pressure they are on, they are under. So um, I think they handled it uh, quite well. Um, especially towards the end, uh, time trouble and very close uh, in points and, and very tough decisions. So I think their, their nerves were good, which is uh, important in, in like a, any sport. Um, and I think this last match was, uh, was a good example of that. They were both uh, under a lot of time pressure and under a lot of pressure um, with the decisions. So I think they handled it superbly. Um, they didn't play so well in the beginning. I think they had to maybe adjust to not playing live backgammon for uh, for a year. Yeah. So uh, like uh, like real competitive live backgammon because of course they practice, but it's it's never the same when you just play, play a, a practice match. It's it's you try to get the same amount of pressure, but then you never get it. It's it's completely different when you play a real match. So I think they were. Maybe a bit uh, had to had, had to get uh, get back into the flow of, of uh, live backgammon um, in the first few matches, but uh, I think towards the end uh, they picked up the pace and 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 played superbly. And uh, I think, as we also discussed earlier, that if they 
were to play another 12 matches now they would play at, a, at an incredible level they would just uh, you know uh, play even better I think and that, that's always the case you're always the best uh, backgammon player to, to watch the end of a backgammon tournament because then you're <laughs> so yeah. so warm up and so much into the flow of the game so um, I think they, they, they were really really strong towards the end both of them uh, maybe especially Mochi he was like playing better, better and better so um let's have a look at the match yeah okay let's break it down yeah i like the way that you uh you talked about the whole series there that's a, that's some good storylines uh but let's get into the match here so um, you were kind enough to flag some positions for us and the viewers and to come on the show and share a little bit of backgammon knowledge here so let's go to the first flag decision just before we had we had a double and a, a tick and now uh hideaki rolls this this 6-5, which is a little bit strange because usually he would just go for a priming game plan. And then he made a quite big mistake here to blitz on the ace point. So so what do you think about this position, Thomas? Yeah, as, as you mentioned, the, the natural play is, is to keep the prime. Um, and uh, for me, this was... Um, I would almost not think about it. It would be too, so automatic just to, to play two down from the mid. Mm -hmm. And I th it's because I've started, studied the opening a lot. Um, so I've seen this this pattern before uh, quite a few times. And uh, it's it struck me during these matches that I think Hideaki is an incredibly talented player. Like he's a natural talent. And I've, I've never seen anyone become so good in four years. But um, if he lacks experience, it's it's maybe on some some things you 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 gain by playing for many many years. Like some opening concepts, you have to see like ten times, twenty times, and then they just stick. And and uh, I think this might be one of them. It's 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 a it's a concept that I, I know I made this mis kind of mistake myself uh, many times before learning it. And now I finally realized it's it, you should not just never do this. Okay. Uh, for me, as, as I see it, um, as I think Sebastian Wilkinson pointed out earlier, when you have the 18 point, you don't need to keep midpoint, basically. You don't need to, to stick to your midpoint. Uh, the 18 point controls the outfield already, so you can you can release the midpoint when you have the 18 point. So this is one, one point uh, about this play, and another point is when you have the the bar point generally in the opening, you you don't want to break it. You don't want to make any. You really have to be able to make a strong blitzing play uh, to to release your bar point. So, for um, instance, a four three here, he probably would, right? But then you would attack. He would for, for sure. He would. Um, yeah. But six five uh, hitting on the on the ace is just uh, it's just too deep, and uh, you get you. You have a lot of you have a world of trouble if he rolls a, a, a three, um, and if you just uh, look at the you know the pretty play uh, bringing two down, it's even even normally it's it's not so comfortable for for the other guy to hit with an ace because you will leave return shots. You need to roll like an uh, an ace four or an ace six to to safety the blood, and he, here you even have some duplication with the. Um, with the closed uh, or with the, the blood on the on the five pound and the ace duplication, so yeah, for me this was this was a a very thematic opening, very yeah. good to see because it, it's it's one that's gonna come up again and again and I'm pretty sure Hideaki knows it now. He, he's yeah. not gonna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so don't break the seven point to hit uh, on the one point. I guess yeah, that's, don't that's good. Don't be afraid to release the mid point when you have the eighteen point. That's also very. I, I have another. I have a new way of explaining some of these things, uh, Thomas. Let me let me know what you think. What about, uh, or hear me out. Um, mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out how to explain what is the the value of a point. What's the what's the whole? What's it? Why is it so good to make points in backgammon? And then I try to articulate what's the what's the purpose. And it actually has, serves multiple purposes because the obvious purpose is that it blocks your opponent from moving to that point and especially if you can make multiple points then you can really block your opponent and prevent him from uh, advancing his back, back checkers will which eventually will win you the game because now he's going to have too much race to catch up to when you get all your checkers home 
But the flip yeah. side of that is that uh, it also serves as a good landing spot for the rest of your checkers. And in this mm. position, Hideaki, in a non-hitting play, Hideaki is up 18 pips, which means that he just needs to get his checkers home. And by il destroying his seven point, he destroys a very, very crucial landing space for the rest of the checkers. So mm. not only is it good for priming here, which is the obvious uh, use of the point, but it's also very good just to bring the checkers home. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's the, the, the winning play uh, DMP wise. It's, it's the play you want to make if you, if you're playing a DMP. Of course, you could consider the the blitzing play if it was uh, like a gammon go, pure gammon go. Yes. Uh, but yeah. But I, I I agree that it, it serves multiple purposes. The seven point is just good for both for landing and and yeah. priming. So it's it's a very strong point. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. I don't think Hideaki is going to make this mistake again. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and Mochi probably wouldn't have made it either. But uh, that might be something with the experience. Okay. Next flag position. Uh, redouble take. This was an interesting decision because Mochi spent, I think he spent like four minutes on his time bank here or something like this uh, to find. Yeah, to very, come up very with this interesting. Ritual. So, very what do you think? What do you think about this position, Thomas? It was uh, actually quite interesting for me because I thought I thought the the take was a different difficult one, and when I saw the in, Mochi take such a long thing, and I saw people in the chat uh, going on, maybe it's a no double and. Um, I think it, there's a tendency to underestimate uh, how how bad it is to have one check on the bar against the five point board. You lose so many gammons. It's it's really really uh, nasty in gammon wise uh, if you have a lot of check on the on the, uh, in the outfield. Mm -hmm. so, um, I thought definitely this was this was a this was a, a, a difficult take, and I can I can uh, truly understand why Mochi would take a long a long think. Even if it turned out to be a pass, it's it's okay for him to to be pretty sure before he risks the, the match uh, or like, like makes a crucial decision for the match. So so I agree with his time management. It's good to to take time on this, um, and of course it, it helps Hideaki think on Mochi's time and and uh, make a decision while Mochi is mm -hmm. thinking. But but interestingly interestingly this is actually a, a big money pass. So. Uh -huh. um, it's it's uh, it's a score thing, um, which I think many people would take it for money as well. So it's a bit deceptive. It's it's deceptively strong, and I think one of the reasons is that um, actually, Thomas, I'm just checking it here. It's a borderline take for money, so okay, it's still it's a take, take, but it's money. very close. Okay, it's, yeah. so it's uh, yeah, it's difficult to take for money, but, uh, yeah. but I think one of the one of the problems for 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 black in this position, uh, or for uh, yeah for, for the tech side is is uh, when he enters uh, he he will often uh, enter with an awkward uh, roll like say a, a four one mm. or four two four four five even jumping out it's it's you don't have any spares so this this makes it harder. That's a um, good point. And. Uh, and yeah, I think it, it comes down to, um, it's, it's as you said, borderline for money, and and at the score, it's it's, it's a clear take, but still not a huge take. Uh, the gammon value is a, a little bit lower at the score because you, if you win a gammon on a four cube, it's uh, you win eight points instead of seven, so there's a little bit of uh, overshooting uh, the target. So I th I think it was a. Um, it was not so easy to find this take, um, and and maybe he was helped by practical reasons a little bit. He he could sense some real doubt in Mochi's mind of, of, about the double. <laughs> he also had time on Mochi's uh, time to to think about it. So, uh, good, very good double, very good take. Uh, yeah. Impressed by both. Yes, uh, and then in your notes here, you you say something about a thirty thirty position. What do you mean by this? Oh yeah, that's that's one of my uh, you know. Uh, my uh, key themes that I, I often use in my own notes. There's, there's, there are a lot of backgammon positions where it's kind of they are kind of volatile and crazy, and it's blitzing like a blitz position or prime versus prime or back game. The doubling side often wins 
thirty percent gammons, which is a, a lot in backgammon. That's like a really really dangerous cube to take, and the tech side often wins in his thirties in wins. So like a say a normal uh, opening double five blitz, for example, mm -hmm. six to five fan. It's uh, it's you're gonna win gammons in your thirties. 30 plus gammons and you win gonna win uh, 30 plus games as the take side mm -hmm. and these are very very score dependent so if you have if you have a, a lead and and are considering to take a cube it's often a huge pass to take these 30 30 positions it can even be like a like a thousand thousand mistake to, to take them sometimes <laughs> uh, and uh, if you have a uh, in the opposite, opposite situation, if you're leading and considering to double a 30-30 position and you have a big lead, it's often a huge blunder to double mm -hmm. and huge blunder to pass. So it's mm -hmm. these these volatile positions, um, a blitz like this, I, I consider this a blitz because he's on the bar and he can easily be closed out. Uh, opening blitzes also, back games, prime versus prime positions, they are, they are often 30-30 positions and they are extremely score dependent so whenever you have a position like that you should stop and think okay is the am i leading am i trailing uh, and and often the 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 the, mess, the 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 take or pass and double no double strategy is completely dictated by that so yeah. this is an, an example of that and yes. and, and uh, at, if if uh, if hideagi was leading say 3 0 i would guess that this would be a uh, a blunder to take. Uh, yeah, I get like, an even more extreme match score. But like even two. just a one point difference, because the score here is zero zero. So the, even just like giving him one point would probably make it a huge pass. I would guess. Yeah. Probably oh, swing it to a pass. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big pass if he's up one zero to seven. He yeah, okay. and Mochi. So it's uh, it's very uh, yeah it's 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 very iffy with the score. Yes, and what about this is what Dirk Schiemann talked about. What if Mochi was leading one zero? Then it's a big no double, <laughs> big no double and a take. So the redoubles are. Is it the, is it the big no double if Mochi leads one zero? Yes. The, yes. Then it's a ninety six uh, according to XG plus a ninety six. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it swings yeah. it like a two hundred and yes. And 30. So Just Dick Schiemann had an expression that on redoubles, there are no such thing as a normal score. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's is a good cool point by Dick. I, that's actually one of the, the things I, I bring with me from, from watching uh, these expert sessions. Like for redoubles, there's no such thing as a, as a normal score. I yeah, like it. That's a good one. Okay. So should uh, we... Yeah. Sorry, Thomas. Yeah, should we go for the next? Yes, let's go for the next. Um, we're skipping some positions here. We want to just show you the most juicy positions. So now we're okay. We're heading to game two now. I'm just showing the opening sequence for the viewers, and uh, then we get to the next flag, which is a cube action. It's the double take uh, position here. Uh, both players played it correctly. Uh, but what do you think about this uh, position, Thomas? Now Hideaki is down four zero to seven. I think it's. Um, I think it's. Mm, it's quite interesting in the in the way that um, it's again a bit score dependent. Uh, or it's, it's, this is the score matters a little bit in in Mochi's shoes. I would leading four zero. I would already be a bit afraid. For example, like if it was a what I consider a thirty thirty position, like an opening blitz. This mm -hmm. this at this score, I would pass a lot. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have to. You have to make sure you don't take that concept too far, and uh, and in in a position like this, it, okay, it is a kind of a blitz, but you still have the twenty four anger, um, and what you could ask ask yourself in this position is, uh, would 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 it even be a double uh, a double for money? And uh, in this case, the answer would would be no. Um, it's the the threats are not huge. He, okay, he has uh, the three point made and he's threatening to make another point, but is even a market loser for money. Uh, I have the f five point myself as a take side, so I would I would guess it it's would be a, a clear no double for money. Yeah, it is. It's fifty eight milli points, no double for money, so a clear no double. Yeah, so so uh, when when you when you figure out that it's it's a clear no double for money and you see there's not a huge amount of gammons in it, then then okay. 
then you have to calm down and say, okay, even if I'm leading 4-0, I can take this. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's fine to take it. So, so the match score kind of skews the decision one step in the from no double take to double take. And if it was double yeah, take for yeah, money, then you would think that it would be a double pass at this point. Typically, score. yeah, ex exactly. And also from Hideaki's point of view, it's uh, he's considering whether it's a double. Okay, he realizes realizes it's probably a, a bit from a double at money, but it's not that far away. Mm -hmm. If you make a point and he fans in, it's like a huge pass uh, at the score at least. Uh, and then uh, there are some jokers, uh, and you are not so far away from escaping the last checker. So. Good double and a good take, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, not too much. Uh, they had good do good decisions, and then we Mochi gets this double five from the bar, which is an an amazing shot. It's actually a joker, uh, and then he he mm. made a play that that surprised me a bit uh, during the live commentary. Yeah, you, what do you think about yeah, this you, position? You had you had you had the right idea that um, it's actually first. I would say this. I would, I would, my like, my instinct would be to play the same as Mochi here because it, it just seems kind of kind of normal and natural. I think my speed play would be the same as Mochi's. Uh, just uh, stay on the twenty point, slot the anchor, make the ace, play to the eight, unstack the you know break the mountain on the on the six point. Um, but then uh, analyzing it a little bit and and also seeing how close the race is. If you hit on the on the ten, you gain nine pips and the race is. It's virtually even mm -hmm. uh, after that. And the, the the more even the race is, the more important it becomes to uh, to to you know be greedy for for pips. You mm -hmm. have to to grab pips you you can and and save all the pips you can. Okay. And the ten here just uh, is a very good and greedy pip play. And as you also pointed out, it, it now you're all all of a sudden playing uh, two two checkers down each, like like in the opening position and. It, it, it's just a you know more more ambitious play and and a little bit better, but if Mochis wasn't a big error like a like no. a sixteen million points. So so just, so just uh, I'm just uh, uh, extracting a, 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 an important uh, lesson you just gave there for the less experienced players watching that uh, the closer the race is, the more important the race becomes. So each pip matters more. And that was the the theme that Thomas was grabbing onto here. That uh, hitting on the ten points, it gains a lot of uh, nine extra pips, which matters a lot because the race is so close. So that's a good lesson, Thomas. Thank yeah, you very exactly. much. If if you are, if you have a hopeless race, it's, it doesn't matter a lot if you win ten or twenty pips. Yeah. So, but matters a lot. Um, okay. okay. Moving on here. Um, then we get into this position where both of them establishes the anger. Now we're playing a. Mutual holding game style position. Uh, we did have some, we did have some difficulties here, but Hideaki ends up just bringing this position home. Yeah, that's it for game two. No more flags. Let's go to game three. Um, by the way, if you appreciate uh, Thomas's Thomas coming on to the show and sharing his knowledge, smash the like button. We're at three oh seven likes. That's I mean, we broke the record today for most concurrent live viewers ever on a backgammon stream. We were, I believe we were 1,352 viewers at peak. So that's amazing. So we could do a little bit better on the like department, but uh, I'll leave that up to the, the, the viewers. Um, okay, so we're in game three here. This is an interesting game because all of a sudden it's kind Very of like an early back game position, but it's, Hideaki establishes three anchors and uh, yeah. Very and, difficult game. In a, in the final match, having little time, having to play against the back game, having to play a back game, it's very very nasty. And and especially if if you if you forget the clock a little bit, then all of a sudden you can be like under ten seconds and just be in total panic. So, uh, for example, this double sixes, it's it's a it's a play you would like to have. Wait, humans. Thomas. Before we go to the double sixes, there's actually a position that I want to oh, yeah. talk briefly about: the double uh, aces in move seven for Hideaki because the move that oh, yeah. he was looking at the Harikiri play yeah I, I sometimes have, have made these plays and, and yeah gotten, but it's not even in the blunder or something it, no but it's not even in XG they don't even have the right play because the the only play where XG opens up the entire inner board is the one where he also opens up two of his anchors from behind it makes no ah, sense yeah, okay. so the play okay. is not so, in the XG filter 
not even an XG. Okay. I'm getting curious now. Uh, but I mean, like, I, uh, what do you think about the position? Like you, said, you, you don't need to make it. It's, it's just uh, you're just going to increase your, your own back gamut. You have enough uh, timing and good points anyway. It's, it's, you don't need it. Uh, you, you might make it uh, in, a, in other, under other circumstances, but but you're not uh, desperate enough yet. You still have a, you have a find. I call this a, like um, a backgammon holding game. It's it's kind of a mix between a back a back game and and hold, holding game. Um, it's it's kind of a mix or hybrid between the two. Yeah. Positions you don't you're not so desperate because you have a fine, kind of a holding game back game. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I like yeah, the expression, a back game was... holding game. I usually call them early back games because they're not really yeah, turned yeah, that's, into back that's, uh, Yeah, that's also a but, problem. Uh, I also mm. like your expression. I think yeah, uh, yeah I think the double aces was was, was uh, well played. Uh, just uh, it makes your your you don't have all the timing in the world. You can't afford to just stay as long as as, as far back as possible. So it's it's it makes sense to do what he did, uh, and yeah. I think it's. Uh, Okay, so the lesson is that the less timing you have, or the less you're down in the race, the more advanced of a back game of ang or anchors do you want, because then it's easier to preserve your timing and come out. The more you're behind in the race, the more timing you've got, and the more deep you can afford to be placed in order to try to get contact, right? That's the concept. Exactly, yeah. But of course, uh, if, if Hideaki could choose to go back in time, he would make the Harakiri play and see if he could provoke a time loss or something for most yeah people. exactly i mean that was the, that was uh, my idea as well yeah it's uh, like it, it would become complete chaos for the rest of the game and and you would see the prs go way up and and it you know if you were more you know desperate and and mochi was maybe already below 20 seconds then even then i wouldn't do it <laughs> but <laughs> so how far uh, would mochi so, be on the clock before you would make this move mm, maybe on the one second I would one second yeah so it's three way five way it could be a couple of trouble, games you know you know mechanically moving the the checkers so he might lose the one second uh for just for just not being able to move the checkers fast enough <laughs> i'm not, i don't i wouldn't make it i wouldn't suggest making it but uh okay but it's a funny fun. funny idea like if you really need to create chaos in this format because this is not normal backgammon tournament it's the UBC, the ultimate Begammon championship, and it's a special rule set with the PR points. So yeah, it, yeah, it, you could you could uh, completely destroy your opponent's PR and, and chances of a wild card or something in a, in a PR tournament. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But let's let's look at the yeah. uh, the other positions. Yes, let's go to the next flag. So that's the double six uh, from Hideaki. Yeah, that's I found I find found this really interesting you didn't talk about it so much maybe because it uh, they were low on time and, yeah. and to make it uh, very quickly but um there was actually uh if he had had a lot of time here he could have gone through the roles and uh, and these back games are often very tactical mm -hmm. you want to give your opponents the the, the worst uh, you know horror roles uh, you you can possibly give him and uh, there's actually a tactical point here by um, by leaving the the 21 point, which is is not your, the natural point to leave because you want to keep a maximum contact. But his, his some of his falls play, uh, you know, truly horribly. Um, like the six four he rolled in the game. Uh -huh. Try look, try to see how it plays after after leaving the. Um, oh yes, if we make the other play. Uh, I'm just going to show this to the viewers. A, a triple shot and two blocks. Yeah, so let's see that. Uh, Double shot and one block. If he leaves the 21 point, and then Mochi would roll a 6 4. Yeah. Yeah, it's so a forced move, oh. and it would be played like this. Oh, wow. A triple yeah, yeah, shot. It's, it's, it's a triple shot and two blocks. And, and then the cube would be really, really interesting. Much, it's, much, uh, more, much more nasty for for Mochi than than the cube he actually gave. I think this uh, this might even be a pass. I think because it might of the be a pass. additional um, lots sure. uh, at this score, it. you take it from money. I haven't checked it. Could be a pass. It's it's really really nasty. So so if Hideaki had had some more time, he could have uh, you know done the in in some positions you you can play by feel, but but a position like this is not one of them and and. The agnosis, but he didn't have time, of course. But if he had had like two, three minutes to think about it, 
he could have uh, found his play, I think. Yeah, and it was was actually a huge pass after that sequence that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah it, okay. It, it's I okay. So there's multiple ideas here. The first idea is that th these kind of Baron versus back game positions are highly tactical. So you need to look for the horror numbers of your opponent, or which numbers that plays uh, well or bad for yourself. And the second lesson was that usually you prefer to have the anger as far back as possible because that maximizes the contact. But in this case, the tactical feature of the bad force makes leaving the, the unnatural anger uh, become the best play because exactly, especially the six four, but all fours, I guess, I mean, what four one also plays? Uh, to, four, to... Four, three, four three is also really, really bad. Ooh, that's uh, nasty as well. Yeah. Same, three. same, uh, same idea. Yes, and then a roll like five. Uh, it's, 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 it's the same. Yes, yeah. and uh, I mean even f four two uh, has to either leave a double shot or stack. Uh, yeah, the fours are really, really nasty. So he he wasn't paying enough t attention to the tactics here, or he was simply just too low on time to to calculate it. Yeah, and, and the fives the fives play anyway to the ace, so that it's not so important to leave the the. Um, yeah, you yeah, you don't really give him anything by leaving the the twenty point. Yeah, that's a good point as well. Um, okay, so then we get into this uh, situation where Muchi rolls a horror six four, but it's not slack, yeah, exactly. not as bad as, as it could have been. Uh, but he does leave a double shot, and now Hideaki. I think I I sc screamed out loud during the stream that I loved the cube immediately because he yeah. doubled so fast. And you then you Nick really love to like, cube this, and and I've cubed them so many times. And what I've learned. Is that it's 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 so tempting, um, but you ha really have to make sure when you cube on these double shots in 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 a, from from a from a back game or a holding game. Um, it's uh, you have to 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 think it it through and be sure that the market loss is is big enough, um, yeah. and uh, you have to fight your temptation to just cube straight away because you feel so good about the, the double shot. I would say against really weak players, sometimes you can you can get a, a pass if you cube these straight away and instantly, but I'm not I'm sure Mochi is not ever gonna pass this. Mm -hmm. So he uh, he should take some Hideagi should have taken some time to to think about it. Mm -hmm. Um if you um if you look at this position, you you see that I don't know if you can do the, the dice distribution for the cube. I can, yeah. Uh, mm. I can show this to the viewers here. The dice distribution. Yes, here we go. Um, it's it shows that uh, there are something like thirty three percent market losers, mm -hmm. which is uh, basically a hit and a fan, and mm. there are uh, thirty six percent. Anti jokers, you can see the 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 red. Do you have it with the yes. the, the the green and red? Uh, you know. Uh -huh. Yes. And um, it it shows just shows that you have a lot of uh, volatility, but it, you also have. Um, you, it's it's almost easier for you to go wrong than than you know go your way, and um, mm -hmm. and you also pointed out during the stream, the market loss is not huge. You're not gonna win a lot of gamins. You only catching one checker mm -hmm. the score consideration um uh, you are five away which i think you also it also came up in some previous matches it's not so bad to just cash one point when you're five points away mm -hmm. because you're it's four way yeah so that's the idea of each point in the match score it doesn't have the same value so going from five away to four away is highly efficient. It has a lot of value because yeah, now you get in the range of a double gamma. But going from four exactly. away to three away, it doesn't have the it's same efficiency. A, no, exactly. And for example, at zero zero in a five point match, uh, the take point is, is a, a bit lower because it's not so important to 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 win two points. It's it's you. Of course, you want to win two points, but it's one point is is already good enough. You're you're getting in in the range of winning the game in in point away which is just a double and a gamut so this is also a, a, a little bit the, the issue here you, you don't need to um it's not a disaster if you hit and he fans and uh, and you catch one point yeah yes it's, it's true basically uh, but it, it's it's kind of a disaster if you if you miss or if, if you hit and get weird or something so it, it's it's just a very uh you know you really have to analyze these uh these double shots and then about yes. before you 
I want to show the viewers a variation here and this is the variation where I take the blood on the 8 point and closes out the beast, the 5 point board. So essentially locking down the 5 point board. Um, now it is a redouble, oh, sorry, uh, it is a double uh, in this position. So that swings it, but that's because first of all the volatility is now higher because now you, you are going to win almost all of your hitters here because mm. of the strong front position. It's not the case in the actual position. And there's also this thing about, uh, maybe Thomas already explained it, I'm going to try to rephrase it in my way, that when you cash a position, when you double and your opponent passes, he's essentially giving up potential winning chances. You're, you're stealing the winning chances from him. You win the game 100% of the time instead of 70 or 80 or 90% of the time. So it's like fold equity in poker. and. Uh, it's not so bad when when you hit him here in the actual position he fans and now you just cash the point you you collect a hundred percent of the winning chances from the position uh, in a position where you don't win close to a hundred percent while if you have the five point board closed your winning chances are so high after the hit that this would be a real market loss and it, it's not as efficient or you don't get to steal so much equity from your opponent by cashing now so therefore it's you're just better off you have more incentive to, to double before. And the volatility, of course, is higher because we're closer to a, a last roll position in this case. Exactly. Yep. OK. Uh, Anything else you want to say about this position, Thomas? Uh, not about this position, but but the game evolves. It, 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 uh, the, the, the complexity of the game, uh, you know, uh, endures. It, it's still there. Um, yeah. Yeah, because actually it's, we did get to see the hit and then Mochi uh, fanned and he still didn't close and then Mochi rolls a 6-1 and it's still an open game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, there's, there's a lot of work still to do mm -hmm. uh, after after hitting, so um, which says, says a little bit about the, the earliness of the cube. So, yes. Um, okay, uh, so then, um, I'm scrolling down to find a lot the next of, flag. There's, then there's some scramble back and forth. Uh -huh. and, uh, they find some good plays, and then yeah. um, then we get to into the six one. Yeah, the uh, six one is was it, it was Mochi's first blunder in four matches actually. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very it, it was extremely interesting. I, I thought it was uh, to be honest. I would my my instinct would be to to play the same. Uh, if 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 I was under time pressure, I would just think okay, I'm forced to leave a shot. I can either leave a leave a shot uh, and and uh, not put him under pressure, or I can leave a shot and at least put him on the bar against the four point board. Of course, I want to hit and put him on a on the bar against the four point board. It, it seems natural. Mm -hmm. So my speed, I could make the same huge huge blunder in speed, um, just because uh, yeah, if if you if you're not if you're gonna leave a shot anyway, not, why not yeah. why not uh, yes. some board like. Uh, Give him some fanning rolls, but, but it's such um, a wrong idea here. So, so what's up? Such with a that wrong sense? idea, and the, and the the problem is it's again again a very concrete um, position. If if you have time to analyze it, which Mochi didn't, <laughs> then, uh, then you can uh, crunch through numbers and and uh, and analyze it in in more detail. And first of all, by hitting. Instead of playing, uh, instead of just clearing the eight point, you leave uh, three extra shots and one extra blood, which is a lot. Uh, three extra shot, uh, you know, decreases your winning chances a, a lot, and one extra blood uh, increases his gamins a lot. Mm -hmm. And then also the the other problem with the analysis, the the, the quick intuitive analysis of uh, of hitting. Is that there's not a not a huge upside or not any upside at all almost yeah. by him. But it's, there would uh, be if Mochi had played the better variant because actually 15 to nine is significantly better than Mochi's play. So if yeah, you hit, true, then you could go all in because now the upside is at least there. Now you're gonna probably close the five point afterwards, uh, yeah, and you get to clear the fifteen. Point. That's a good point. Then you just play with the three blasts. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's 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 a lot better. You win a lot more games, and that's actually the DMP play. Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So like this, a DMP player. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The problem after Mochi's play is that um, uh, is that uh, it's not so easy to follow up. Uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of awkward rolls 
uh, afterwards, like uh, a lot of the fives are really, really awkward. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, even like a five three, you close <laughs> it five and then uh, the, you, cl you close with the three and then where's your five and, yeah. and uh, it's basically not a good roll. So yeah. it's... it's uh, Double robots. five and double three are horrible. Double five, double three is truly horrible. Six one is horrible. Five one is horrible. So many horrible rolls. So it's, ah, it's five not... one, you can clear the, the six point, but still not good, Oof. but... Five three? Uh, five one, sorry. I thought five, you said, one. I thought one you said five one. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's true, that's true. But it's it's uh, it's quite difficult to follow up, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Mochi, of course, in, in the game role, the perfect for one. So he he probably didn't consider that he made this blunder because uh, sometimes when you roll the perfect follow up, you thought you just played it played it fine. Uh -huh. But um, there's also another issue here that that uh, if you don't hit him, he is forced to. To break something next roll, if he if he if he if he doesn't hit you back, he has uh, like I I think you mentioned this this concept in in earlier in, in earlier matches, um, of to having too many points. He has uh, your opponent has seven points, so um, if he if he doesn't hit you, he has to either break a point or run with his back checker. Mm -hmm want to break his board so he would need to to break uh, the 13 point most likely or the 15 point and you would get get chances to to hit him uh, in in the, the outfield which is much more uh, mm -hmm. comfortable so yes actually also a good waiting play just to play the, mm -hmm. the quiet yes so the lesson but, is if your opponent is running out of timing just make a waiting play because he has to move and now you will have a much better position next time yeah exactly and uh uh, the, the, maybe the most interesting part for me about this position was that it reminded me a bit about uh, an, an earlier blunder by Mochi in a previous match. I can't mm -hmm. remember, but it was like a similar position where he had a 3 1, he made like a pick and pass play. Yes, and, and day one. I would have made the same <laughs> blunder again, I think, <laughs> yeah. again, and under, or under time pressure. That it just seems natural to hit him and put him on the bar against the four point board, and um, that's at least my intuition. But again, the quiet play was was much much better, mm -hmm. and these are difficult to find. And I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I've learned to find them. But um, I, at least I hope I learned something from these ones too. Yeah. To I can think another time I have a, like a, this this all in play, uh, or like a more quiet play, uh, more prudent play. And I hope I'm I'm able to find the prudent play. But um, yeah. yeah, my intuition is wrong in these cases, so it's it's difficult for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm following you, Thomas. It, I, I totally agree with everything you say. The, the, if the, the, the first level logic is just that if you're going to leave a shot anyway, why not hit and get a gain of, on it? But then uh, uh, the tactics matter. So that's a lesson. Tactics matters. Mm -hmm. You need to count the number of shots that hits you. If it's significantly more, maybe it's not the right idea. And then there's the other. I think this is the one, the concept that's a little bit more difficult to, to find over the board. But of course we, we must, and that's the timing aspect of it. We have to look at the timing of both players. Is my position deteriorating or is it improving? If it's improving, then just make it a constructive play. You don't need to make a dramatic play now. And the same with the opponent. Mm. Is my opponent's position getting better or is he running out of timing and is he about to break something? And that's the case here. He's about to break something. Uh, and I think that's actually, if we had spotted, if he had spotted that idea over the board, I think he could have made the right play even in a speed gammon situation. Yeah, maybe, maybe he, he he played quite quickly, which I understand because yeah. it's a position you want to think you 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 can easily become in in greater and greater doubt the more you think if you don't have enough time and then make the same blunder after uh, you know forty five seconds of thought and then be down to ten seconds. So yeah, it was really tough under the time pressure and and uh, very interesting to see him make this kind of mistake twice. Yes, that, that's like, true. That's really funny to see that uh, consistent uh, uh, error. <laughs> yeah, I hope Mochi's so probably going to correct it to next year. <laughs> yeah, I think he's he's going to learn from this this type of error because it was it, it cost him dearly twice. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on to uh, a crucial decision. Actually, this was uh, the the. So each player, I believe they had one blunder each. Yes, so that was the blunder from Mochi, the 6-1, and now we get to the blunder of Hideaki. Yeah. Double four. 
And I believe it's I said something like I didn't really understand it over the board. Yeah, yeah, that's I I, agree, I fully agree with your comments, your your next comments during the game. It's a it's again a bit panicky play. I think he was also low on time, and he wants to, he he was just in the in the mode, you know, in in his uh, in a mental mode of uh, keeping uh, maximum contact. So he thought, okay, why not keep the eleven point as contact? And as you pointed out, it's it's it doesn't really gain on anything. Only double aces, and it's so the gain is so small because you 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 switch the point anyway. Mm -hmm. the, the the tactical flaw of the play, like the, you 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 keep his checker, but but you're gonna you're gonna be on the bar against the five point board anyway. So you gain just a very tiny bit. While on all the other plays, uh, when he just runs, there's there's no real play where he where he could. Uh, Choose to stay in the 15 point anyway, so so you're just gonna have a weaker weaker board when you hit him. Yes, um, and that's crucial. Guess, a weaker prime. Uh, yeah. If you have the the open uh, deuce point and the open six point, it's it's easier to close. And the, yes, he's behind the four prime four prime if he comes out. Yes, so, it's a huge difference. Uh, and no 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 real upside. A lot of downside play and and it, yeah amounts yes. to blood. Yeah. Um, again, uh, time pressure. And maybe that's also a lesson to the less experienced viewers out there. Making this switching play and destroying your inner board like this, it's, I mean, look for another play. You only do this if you have no other alternative uh, because it's really, really costly. Every time you hit your opponent, which is what you're trying to do, you're just going to have a much more hard time to trying to win the game from here because he can you can just also kill a, You kill a checker, by the way, also. The, oh, the yeah. Checker. Three point is, is now dead and it's still yeah. alive if you keep it. Yes. Um, and so, yeah. Just yeah, that was a bad move. Basically, uh, plays that really ruin your board. They, you, all alarm bells should <laughs> should go off every time you look at a play that that uh, this is not, of course, not directly breaking your board, but it's it's you know it's uh, diminishing it uh, quite a bit. But but worse for players that that it actually break your board, even even at the cost of leaving shots, it's often much better than than breaking a board. It's mm -hmm. it's it, at least it's it's something to to you know be very concerned about when you're looking at a at a board mm -hmm. breaking. Yeah. 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 Okay, and then we get into this uh, redouble pass, and now we are at the Crawford game six two to Mochi, and uh, that's the final game of the match. So I'm just scrolling through some moves here. Um, no, this is the second last game. Oh, that's the fifth game. Oh, yes, sorry. That's, um, yeah, it's a uh, bad memory. It was uh, well played that game by both of them. Yeah, some small inaccuracies. Few, few but, inaccuracies, okay, we, but it maybe wasn't the most. No, um, play. Nothing, nothing too much. Maybe well. Uh, no, we, we get to the to the last game. Yeah, let's go to game five. That was an interesting game as well. So we have the automatic this, double. And yeah, and. And uh, one one thing about a game like this is post Crawford is uh, of course remember to double and then uh, then uh, realize what you're tr what you're playing for uh, as you as you also mentioned uh, one guy is, is in is in gammon go mode and one guy is in gammon save mode and it, it changes the, the strategy a lot sometimes it, it's as you said makes it easier to play because you know you're you're gonna try to avoid a gammon. You try, uh, as Mochi, Mochi is really, really, he can lose a match uh, by losing a double gammon mm -hmm. and he is, is going all in for the gammon. So he mm -hmm. should not be afraid of anything. He should like play fearless gammon. And it's actually, even though I'm trailing in the match, I kind of like this uh, psychologically. I like this situation of being in a gammon go situation because you can just play no breaks and, and just go all, all, all in and, and just uh, go for the gammon and don't worry about getting gammon at all or mm -hmm. even... Uh, 24 point checkers they, they you can you can just forget about them that they're not so important you should just try to to blitz your opponent or prime him or, uh, or whatever of yeah. course you should not take it to extremes but you should keep yes. in mind that, that, that you, you're going for the gammon yeah the choose. gain is so huge to win a gammon and for the for the for the leader he's in a gammon safe he's actually playing just as much to save the gammon as he is for winning this particular game because the game will be 50% match-winning chances either way. Yeah, exactly. It's equally important. Yeah. 
Um, so, okay, so we, we, we head to this 5-1 uh, uh, for Hideaki, and he misses a beautiful play here. It's not a yeah, big mistake, he, but... Hideaki gets a, a great double fault, and now now it's looking like a, the perfect game for him. He's, he's about to, to blitz Mochi. Mm -hmm. Mochi handles with a 3-2, makes it a very good defensive anger. Yes, crucial role. 5-1. <laughs> um, and that's a good example of, of the all-in, or all, uh, you know, aggressive uh, gammon go play. You, of course, you make the eight point, and then you have a, a an ace to play. And which point do you want to make? Uh, the five point. And as I think you maybe also mentioned in, in previous game uh, games or previous matches, the the eleven point is very good together with the with the slot on the on the five point mm -hmm. to the eleven point or checker on the eleven is very as as you see with the two one in the opening. So the slotting the five is is quite thematic, even though you, you use the last checker. Mm -hmm. Especially since uh, Mochi really would hate to hit uh, and break his anger. Because yes, it would, uh, that's a good point. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, like a trick play. You want to trick him off the anger. Should he even hit with a, like a 2-1? Mm -hmm. Or like a... Probably not. A 2-4, he definitely shouldn't hit. You should make the 4-1. Yeah, so there's a duplication of deuces as well. Duplication of deuces and and uh, and and uh, you know, uh, there's there's an opposition or like a, Mochi is not not uh, willing to to break his uh, his twenty two point uh, twenty two anger uh, basically. So and um, so Hideaki, um, Hideaki chose the more normal play. Uh, at at uh, if if the score had been reversed, if this would surely be a good play, but uh, at score he should have uh, gone for the the more aggressive uh, gammon seeking play. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think there's another concept here, Thomas, that we also touched upon in an earlier episode, where sometimes slotting the five point is quite good against an, uh, the opponent's anger if the anger's on the four or the three point, because it comes mm. with such a big price to break the anger to hit. And, yeah, uh, and usually aces and deuces are good building numbers, so there's the duplication factor as well. Mm. And yeah. so that's something there as well. Whereas yeah, if, if the I... anger is deeper on the two or the one point, you're already priming those checkers, so you don't have a, that big of an incentive to force your prime even further. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that might be true, yeah. Okay. Um, um, so. Was, was that the last flag, or do we have? No, I have. To, I have to, but they are very similar to this one. It's, it's the same concept. Uh, the five-two in in roll eight. Oh yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. It's, it doesn't um, look like the same position, but you say it's the same concept. Concept. So it's, I guess it's, 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 it's the concept. same general concept. I would say it's yeah. it's. Uh, um, you you want to win a gammon. The gammon is is uh, is you know. Twice as important as, as or like much much more important than normal. Mm -hmm. uh, the way to win a gammon is to 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 strengthen your board, um, and also the contact against his midpoint is is not that bad. He can roll a six one. Good point. You Good will point. get a shot, and then yeah. uh, that will uh, increase your gammon. So by by making the ace, you just you you make a stronger board, and you increase your gammon by a bit. Yeah, and it's that that bad not to, to clear your your midpoint because uh, it's uh, the opponent again has too many points and he's going to break his midpoint and then you're going to break your midpoint next roll anyway. Yes. It was similar that uh, uh, the Yagi was not completely in the gammon go, true gammon go mode. He was playing a little bit too much to win the game uh, and, and uh, sacrificing some gammons that he should have uh, gone for. Mm -hmm. and, my last comment, I think, is is similar. The three two is is just uh, the set, the same. It's uh, looks so natural just to on move nine, just to play uh, eleven to six, trying to win the game. But uh, uh, Mochi really wants to run. Uh, he's he's actually leading the race a little bit. So by making the ace point, you are ready to blitz and mm -hmm. blitz is the plan when you are go playing gammon go. So um, so. All in all, these three small errors from Hideaki um, were you know, of the same nature. You want to to play Gammon Go when you are at the score and play Gammon Go play 
place all in place and uh, as with mochi's uh, two two big hitting plays i i see a bit of a pattern in this matches that uh, that hideaki was um, not adjusting enough in these trailer scores to play all in uh, uh, you know gammon seeking plays um, and uh, mm-hmm. interesting that that's you know that that might have been uh, some pressure or a little bit inexperienced, just not adjusting enough. But it's difficult for for everyone. To, it's so so you know ingrained in us to just play for for the win, play the normal play, not not uh, adjust hugely for the score. So it's very yeah. difficult to adjust uh, in in any to any new situation in a background. And of course, game. he's also aware of this concept, Hideaki. It's just a misapplication. His equilibrium yeah. was just not fine tuned. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, as we saw, he played like a 2.6 in, in all the matches. He was uh, playing extremely well. Yeah. So just uh, like, if I was the coach of, coach of the Japanese team, national team, I would, uh, you know, try to, you know, talk about this concept. Maybe maybe going for the gamble a little bit more. In the, yes. Uh, I think uh, I would I would presume that both Mochi and Hideagi is is gonna learn. I mean, even though they play so close yeah. to perfect, they have sure. stuff to learn, which is also inspiring for all the rest of us. Uh, and we get to sit here and see dissect all of their mistakes, and we learn as well. So the level yeah, of play exactly. is is increasing. And, uh, you know, one thing I'm, I think Mochi is gonna learn or try to learn is is not to get into time trouble. And uh, and. I'm a, I'm a bit of a time trouble addict myself. Uh, <laughs> quite a few of us in, in the Danish Backgammon Federation, and I know how it is. It's it's even though you think you're good at speed and your instincts are good, and you, you're just gonna make huge blunders when you're in time trouble. And you yeah. you if you could somehow get into time trouble a little bit less, then you would be you know take some really really, really huge blunders of your of your PR. Uh, yeah. but it's both. It, it, I mean, it, it was actually one of the main storylines of this uh, title, title fight. Uh, Mochi committing blunders when he was in time trouble. If he hadn't yeah. been in time trouble, he would have played exactly. the, below a 2.0, uh, literally. So, yeah, that's that's going to be interesting to see how yeah, he can he was, improve he that part a, of his game. Yeah, exactly. He was making first. He was making time trouble blunders, and then he was maybe overcompensating a little bit trying to play too quickly to avoid getting into, into time trouble which is like a like an error uh, you know in handling the clock so it's very difficult to strike the the right balance and the uh, and uh, yeah it's 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 definitely uh, uh, an aspect the mo- mochi will uh, decide to work on i think yeah. after this yeah of, of course he played his normal really really super strong number one in the world level so uh yeah it's uh it's impressive. Yes. Really, yeah. So Thomas, thank you so much for coming on. A last question here from me. Are you going to participate in the UBC contender tournament in 2021? Yeah, for sure. It's going to be the, you know, my top uh, priority of the year. Uh, I'm really looking forward. I will, it was such a pleasure playing in Gibraltar. Uh, it's such a, I really like to play under, under a lot of pressure and it's, it's, you learn a lot and uh, it's, it's much more fun. Yeah. Of course, you after a match, but it's uh, it's the name of the game. So uh, I'm yeah, I think this this was a great event, and and now it's been running two years, like uh, or like uh, two two title matches, and uh, it's great. We have a, a, a like a undisputed champion. Of course, he it was very close, so Hideaki deserves a lot of praise. But uh, Mochi is is. I think even Hideaki would uh, acknowledge this that Mochi is number one and. And he's the he's the man to beat. So mm-hmm. I will try to do that, and I guess you will you will too. Yeah, I, we we have to we have to give it our best. Yeah, we have to try. Uh, but I think that you will probably be uh, be one of the the main favorites to win the contender tournaments. I think a lot of people were so impressed, Thomas, by your performance last year. Um, so we, oh, everybody is excited to see how you perform uh, this year as well. And uh, if we were to do a rank li- ranking list of the PRs uh, of UBC matches, you would be the number one player on that list. So I think you will be a, a strong contender this year. So Yeah, I had a good run. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, Thomas. It was a true pleasure. Yeah, you're welcome, Mark. And uh, great uh, watching the show.
Thank you very much. And all the viewers, uh, please smash the like button for Thomas Christensen coming on here and sharing knowledge. It's quite remarkable. Um, let me just, uh, yeah. Okay, let me just finish off this stream here. This was match 12. We got to see uh, who, be uh, who, who, uh, we got to see who won the, the the championship title this year. Mochi got to be the and still uh, the the UBC world champion. It's a different type of backgammon. It's we call the ultimate backgammon championship. Uh, and Mochi is is yet again uh, the the world champion in this format. And uh, yeah, as me and Thomas just talked about, it, the the competition competition level is increasing every year because we get to see here and dissect all of the errors from the, these super grandmasters. And we improve and they improve and year after year, uh, because of competition, we will see uh, better and better uh, backgammon play. And like Nick Blasier was uh, contemplating about what is, the, what is the absolute floor of a human backgammon player? I don't know. I mean, is it 2.0? Is it 2.2? Uh, it's, it's, it would be crazy if the floor was, was reached already. So let's see what happens in the next year's uh, UBCs. I hope that we got a lot of fans this year and you're going to follow again next year. Thanks again for all the donations. Uh, that's truly incredible. I think with the amount of donations we've got now, we've almost covered all of the UBC costs. We're going to leave the donation button open because not all uh, backgammon fans are going to watch this live. Uh, so there will hopefully come some donations after the event is actually over. So we're going to leave it open. Um, yeah, so that's it, guys. Uh, <laughs> we got all these, all of you guys still in the chat. We've got 400 viewers still. That's amazing. All of you hardcore fans hanging out. But um, that's it for now. I'm tired. This was 12 hard days. Nick Glacier and I did the commentary each night uh, before the, the next day's match. So I've been going to bed at 3, 3.30 a.m., uh, and my little son wakes up at 7 a.m. So I haven't gotten much sleep the last two weeks. And I know the team, and especially thanks to Wilson Semilio, uh, the producer and animator and uh, content creator, what an amazing performance he did this year, uh, making all these beautiful transitions and edits and cuts. And, and a great thanks to the, the Japanese team for making such great footage available to us. All the camera setups, the atmosphere, everything in Japan was just perfect. So thank you so much, guys, to the entire Japanese team. And then last but least, thank you to the players, Mochi and Hideaki, for putting on such a great show for us. They brought it, they brought their 100%. And this was what we felt as viewers. That's what made it so exciting. It's always fun to see when you see the masters of any discipline really give their 100%. And that's what we got. Uh, especially in, in match 12, I would say. So uh, that was it for now, guys. Uh, we're going to rest, take a couple of days off and and start to prepare for the Ultimate Backgammon Championship 2021. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye.